My name is Manisa Nakhvi, and this is the 26th episode of the Little Book Company podcast. Today, I have the pleasure to be in conversation with Kamran Azdar Ali. Kamran Azdar Ali is a professor of anthropology, uh, Middle East studies, and Asian studies. He served as the director of the South Asia Institute at the University of Texas, Austin. And he is the author of Planning the Family in Egypt, New Bodies, New Selves, and the co-editor of Gendering Urban Space in the Middle East, South Asia, and Africa, Comparing Cities, Middle East, and South Asia, and Gender Politics and Performance in South Asia. He has been a member of the Institute for Advanced Study at Princeton, a senior fellow at ISIM, University of Leiden, and a fellow at the Weisenschaft Schkolleg at Berlin. He has published several articles on issues of health and gender in Egypt and on ethnicity, class politics, sexuality, and popular culture in Pakistan. And he has written a book called Communism in Pakistan, Politics and Class Activism from 1947 to 1972. Welcome, Kamran. Thank you. It's an honor to be with you. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, you're very, very welcome. Thank you for agreeing uh, to speak with me today. And you've just told me that you've also, you know, have a new book called Towards People's Histories in Pakistan. Gee, absolutely. Uh, it's an edited volume, which uh, my colleague, who is uh, also an anthropologist and lives in London, in England, uh, Asad Ali, and I, we sort of jointly edited a volume uh, Yes, towards people's histories in Pakistan, in an inaudible voices, forgotten past. So it's a collection of essays on various uh, quote unquote silenced histories, silenced histories of Pakistan. I like that silenced histories of Pakistan. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like the fact, but I, I like the title. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, but I wanted to focus first on uh, your book um, about the, uh, about communism in Pakistan, um, politics and class, which um, draws on, I think, three areas, uh, the Communist Party of Pakistan, uh, the progressive writers and their literature, and then the labor organizations or labor movements uh, in Karachi during the 70s. Am I correct? Gee, uh, by and large, I think the progressive uh, writers, uh, the chapter on progressive writers is sort of linked with the communist movement and the kind of tensions that uh, that uh, came about right in Pakistan's initial years between a particular kind of uh, uh, literature that was being promoted in, in connection with the Communist Party and the uh, other set of writers who were more sort of uh, quote unquote art for art's sake. So that kind of it's a kind of a literary debate that happens very early on in Pakistan's history, but it continues from the uh, colonial times mm -hmm. with the, what kind of literature, what is quote unquote good literature, right? Mm -hmm. So I've tried to sort of encompass some of that debate in one of the chapters, but mm -hmm. generally you're right in what you uh, said about the book. Um, and uh, and then it's divided into two parts. Uh, uh, the first part focuses on Hassan Nasir, and the second part is uh, more focused on the labor uh, struggles um, in Karachi, uh, in mainly in 1972. Is is that also a, a correct? No, way? the first part starts uh, actually. The first part uh, is basically the history of the inception of the Communist Party of Pakistan. Hassan Nasir's story or the chapter that deals with Hassan Nasir's uh, unfortunate death uh, is the the fourth chapter in that section. The first two chapters is sort of the how the Communist Party of Pakistan was established, its prehistory in the Communist Party of India. And the stalwart figure in there was the first Secretary General uh, of the Communist Party of Pakistan, Sajjad Zaheer, Sayyid Sajjad Zaheer, who actually in the 30s is also one of the co-founders of the, in the, in the mid-30s, uh, co-founder of the Progressive Writers Movement. So uh, Sajjad Zaheer was sent by the Communist Party of India to Pakistan to be the first Secretary General of the Independent Communist Party of Pakistan. So my first two chapters are basically on the establishment and the figure of Sajjad Zaheer and his relationship with the nascent communist movement in Pakistan. 
the third chapter then takes on the relationship between the communist politics and sort of uh, sort of debates within cultural and uh, in in the cultural and the literary fields and then the fourth is uh, uh, the capture and the what i would call the murder or the sort of uh, you know sure. of uh, of hasan nasir and then yeah the 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 two chapters the last two chapters are most about, more about the 60s uh, and early 70s uh, labor movement to... Well, actually, in between, actually, there's also a chapter on the Pindi conspiracy case, which is sort of, you know, also linked to the Communist Party. I want to um, uh, speak about uh, the Rahul Pindi conspiracy case as well. But before that, can you uh, tell us more about uh, what you found um, that we may not know about uh, uh, Sajjad Zahid? And then uh, we'll move from there. G. Okay, Sajjad Zaheer, I mean, I can switch to Urdu as well. But Sajjad Zaheer Sahib, he, he is, uh, of course, from a very, as we say, Ashrafia, a very sort of established and well-respected family in Lucknow. His father later on becomes the uh, a judge or the chief justice of uh, the United Provinces. And one of his brothers in post-independent uh, India is also an ambassador. He goes and gets a law degree in England and... Uh, He's at Cambridge. He comes back, and uh, prior to even leaving uh, for India in the early 30s, uh, there are three or four: Ahmed Ali, uh, Rashid Jahan, uh, uh, Saad Zada Mahmood, Zafar himself. Uh, they uh, bring out a short, uh, a collection of short stories called Angare, which becomes very scandalous uh, in terms of it was. Uh, People went against it. It was banned. Angare ek afsano ka majmua tha. Usme ek inka apna bhi afsana tha jannat ki basharat. Aur Rashid Jahan sahiba ka tha. Mahmood Zafar sahab jo the Rampur ke unka tha. Ahmed Ali sahab ka tha. Later on in the mid 30s, he's is also uh, one of the founders with Ahmed Ali and others in England of the uh, progressive writers movement. Jo ke baad mein vira baapas aate hain. In the late 30s, he's also very close to Nehru. And when Nehru becomes the president of All India Congress, he's in his kind of uh, kitchen cabinet in Lahabad. Having said that, he's part of the literary uh, movement, but also close to the Communist Party. He's a member of the Communist Party. And in 1948, there is a conference, uh, a Communist Party conference in Calcutta, where it is decided in early 1948, February, March, where it is decided that the as the country has been divided, now the party will also be divided. And as a trusted lieutenant of the then leadership, and we can go into the whole uh, our discussion about the leadership of the Communist Party of India then, he is sent to Pakistan to really as Secretary General. So he comes from India to a part of uh, what would be undivided India's part that became West Pakistan, because East Pakistan, the, the control of that part of the, the countries or East Bengal is still with Calcutta. And he comes here to an area which he's not very familiar with. And he comes to Lahore and he starts to establish and other cadres from, because Bombay was the headquarter of Communist Party of India. Sorry, this is too much detail. But anyway, he's here and he lives in the country for uh, uh, till 1956. So initially, underground and trying to organize the nascent party in various ways and we can go into details but in 1952 uh, march uh, the pindi conspiracy comes uh, case happens and he's eventually uh, arrested with along with others and uh, tried and sentenced it's only in 1956 that that uh, uh, that it's on technicality that uh, conviction is overturned and then there is a whole history about he goes back to India. And then, of course, he stays there. His wife and children are still in India while he's in captivity here. He was initially uh, in Hyderabad and even in Lahore in Hyderabad, but also in parts of Baluchistan. So sorry, <laughs> this is a long winded answer. But he's a very major figure, uh, Manil Saiba, a very major figure, not only in the left movement, but a literary figure. And uh, he has a very interesting, a very good uh, memoir on the progressive writers, uh, movement called Roshnai. And uh, uh, and then he uh, also wrote, while in custody, a very important book on the on the poet Hafiz. So anyway, I'll stop here. 
So uh, uh, all that is very interesting and important. And he also, uh, uh, before uh, being arrested, uh, several years before being arrested, maybe, he started uh, the news magazine called Nea Zamana. So Nea Zamana, yeah, Pher Qaumi Jang, these were part of uh, the Communist Party publications. And he was uh, the editor or part of the editorial board in, uh, in uh, Bombay. Mm -hmm. That's where people like say Yetsipte Hassan and himself and you know others were part of that group. And mm -hmm. uh Zamana, the English may communist ke naam se unka journal aata tha, aur Urdu ka jo tha, wo zamana aya tha. Aur jab jang shuru ho gai, usko kaumi jang ka naam diya gaya. In Pakistan, when she he came back, he also tried to start a similar kind of a uh, communist party ka jo newsletter keh lije, ya akbar keh lije. So, yeah, so he was part of the cultural wing of the Communist Party, not in the, he was in, well, while in Bombay, he was a member of the Communist Party, but more linked with the cultural wing of the Communist Party, and also perhaps sort of in charge of the progressive writers movement. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, Sipte Hassan was the editor of Qaumi Jang? Uh, Sipte Sahib worked with him, worked okay. with, uh, uh, with, uh, um, he may have been at one time, I'm not sure, but Sipte Saab, uh, who were in Hyderabad, and then Aligarh, they were also in the Azam Garh, and they were also in the Kaifi Azmi, and they were also in the So they were there uh, in the office, working together. And this way, then Sipte Saab also said that he from Bombay, from the Communist Party, that he come here. Actually, Sipte Saab, had left uh, for America. Maybe he came here to study, but he was also a correspondent of a uh, of a lab of a journal called Labour, which came out from England, which was which was close to the Communist Party of Great Britain, mm -hmm. and he covered the founding of uh, the UN in 1947, 46, 47 in San Francisco. He had also travelled a little bit to Germany, but eventually he was asked to uh, by the party to come to Pakistan. So he came here most probably in early 1948 or midnight or the by the summer of 1948 Sipte Saab came to Pakistan Gigi to Pakistan around the time a lot of people came slowly to unko bhi isi tarah kaha gaya ke muslim you see what the fact was that in a way it's very ironic i mean the communist party had was very ambivalent about the partition but when partition happened they also divided the muslim cadre should go to pakistan and quote unquote work on the revolution, right? So a lot of the uh, sort of mid-level uh, people. I mean, these were. I mean, I think uh, Sajad Sajad Zahir was part of the uh, Central Committee, but Sipte Saab was not of the Communist Party of India. So they were sent here, and they were also in what was Pakistan. The the what was, in Communist Party of India, there were of course cadres in parts that became Pakistan. A lot of them were Hindus and Sikhs, and they left. But there were certain people who were part of that uh, history who were still here. Uh, Eric Cyprian Saab the or Bilok the. Mm -hmm. So, so there was uh, there there is that history as well that you know there was people from UP or from Rampur or from uh, Bhopal were sent here. Ashwak Saab the Bhopal se they were sent here uh, to manage the affairs and become the leadership of the Communist Party of Pakistan. And there were some Muslim cadres here left as well. They had an, yeah, anyway, so that's, there was some some tension there between those who had come and those who were from here. And but the Hindus and Sikhs had left by and large. Mm -hmm. And and speak about um, Khatija Umar. Who is Khatija Umar in all this? Oh, <laughs> Khadija Umar Sahiba ki jo aap baat kari, it's different. Uh, dekhye, uh, that's a, if you've read it, uh, if you've seen the book, I have, uh, the book is arranged as that every chapter has a preamble, just to put it in perspective. And uh, every chapter has a preamble where I, as an author, speak, uh, use actually uh, the personal pronoun, right? Rather than having a certain kind of uh, history which is detached, I sort of bring myself into it and also show the reader that how I, uh, quote unquote, gathered information, right? It's just a writing technique that I've used, which is sort of not entirely something which uh, which is sort of impersonal, right? So as an anthropologist, that's part of my training. We interview people. 
So in the course of uh, my research in the police files, the name of Khadija Omar kept on uh, um, kept on coming up. And so, आप मुझे मैं पूरी कहानी बताऊं या आपके आपकी क्योंकि खदीजा या anyway आपको मैं बताता हूं तो मुझे अंदाजा नहीं था खदीजा उमर कौन है लेकिन कुछ दोस्तों से पता चला कि शायद जो हमारे आर्किटेक्ट हैं वेरी सीनियर आर्किटेक्ट और हम बहुत लोगों के मेंटोर भी हैं लाहौर में कामिल खान मुमताज उनकी वालदा हो या उनकी रिश्तेदारी हो तो मैं उनके पास पहुंचा This is in 2008, 9 when I was researching. So I said, "No, my mother was named Walda, but that's uh, that's not what we were looking for. You're looking for my Mawani." So I went, and she was uh, Khadija Sahib was alive, and she was uh, almost in her. She was in her 90s then, uh, wearing a pink sari. I still remember, looking extremely gorgeous. <laughs> and so, uh, that was uh, the thing. Uh, उनकी शादी थी उमर साहब से जो आई डोंट नो इफ यू नो दिस हिस्ट्री पर अलीगढ़ में एक पुलिस ऑफिसर थे क्या नाम है उनका नॉट शौकत उमर बट एनी वे उनकी ही इज अ डिटेक्टिव स्टोरी राइटर एज वेल उनकी बहुत मशहूर है नीली छतरी नीली छतरी एक डिटेक्टिव उर्दू की डिटेक्टिव राइटिंग की एक सीरीज थी वन ऑफ द पाइनियर्स ऑफ उर्दू डिटेक्टिव राइटिंग तो उनकी उनके जो बेटे थे शौकत उनसे इनकी शादी हुई थी और ये लोग जो थे वो सज्जाद जहीर से इनके शोहर दे वर क्लोज एंड शी हर सेल्फ हु डन आई मास्टर्स इन इन मैथमेटिक्स एंड शी वाज इन इजाबेल थॉर्बन कॉलेज इन इन लखनऊ दिस आर वेरी सॉर्ट ऑफ इंट्रिकेट डिटेल्स एंड हाउ द एलिट मैरिड हुम एंड हाउ दे वर ऑल रिलेटेड इनकी बड़ी बहन जो है वो प्रोग्रेसिव पोइट जो थे सरदार जाफरी की बीवी थी तो ये जो है शी बिकेम अ कार्ड कैरिंग मेंबर मोस्ट प्रॉब्ली ऑल दो शी वुड नेवर एडमिट इट इन फ्रंट ऑफ मी एंड शी वाज काइंड ऑफ वर्किंग एज अ करियर इन लाहौर ड्यूरिंग द टाइम ऑफ द जस्ट बिफोर द पिंडी कॉन्स्परेसी केस देवर अदर पीपल एज वेल एंड हर हजबेंड वाज वेरी क्लोज टू सज्जा जहीर साहब बिकॉज दे न्यू ईच अदर फ्रॉम द थर्टीज इन इंग्लैंड एंड देवर ऑल्सो फ्रॉम द यू पी एस शाफिया काइंड ऑफ थिंग and uh, and it was her folks wagon that was used to go to pindi for that meeting at general akbar's house that became the sort of precursor that became the main event that they were accused of that they had conspired at uh, in pindi i don't know manisha sahab if this kind of detail is sort I, of necessary but uh, necessary. i i'm i i think this is exactly the kind of conversation i would like to continue to have so tell us <laughs> and do you remember the color of the volkswagen or did no you... i don't remember the color of the volkswagen i may have in the book somewhere but she actually it was impounded and this i'll tell you what happened is that it was impounded and the person who was the uh, dig police then was uh, uh, was kya kis tarah se aapko samjhaun inke behnoi ke behnoi the राइट यू नो तो खदीजा साहिबा की जो बहनोई थे उनकी बहन की शादी वो डी आई जी साहब से हुई थी आप सोचिए कि ये क्या यू नो इट्स मैटर ऑफ अ सर्टेन एलिट दैट इज सो इंटरवाइंड कोई एक जो है वो डी आई जी क्राइम ब्रांच के हैं या सीक्रेट जो भी है सी आई डी के हैं और एक जो है वो इनके शोहर इंडस्ट्रियलिस्ट थे लेकिन उनकी बहुत करीबी दोस्ती है वो सज्जाद जहीर से ये जो है Could, uh, she was a kind of a, uh, if not a card carrying member but definitely a sympathizer of the communist movement so uh, yeah it's an interesting world that we are talking about was ye padhe likhe log the to phir they double time ig bhi the ya teachers bhi the aur communists bhi the aur writers bhi the aur publishers bhi the sab kuch hi the generally यही पढ़े लिखे लोग थे और इसी के अंदर जैसे कि जो हाँ इनकलाबी शूर और ये बात खैर ये बात भी नहीं भूलनी चाहिए देखिए जो कम्युनिज्म के खिलाफ जो एक फिजा नफरत की थी या उनके ऑपोजिशन की थी ये आहिस्ता आहिस्ता धीरे धीरे कोल्ड वॉर पॉलिटिक्स और हमारी जो रियासत थी जो स्टेट ऑफ पाकिस्तान थी उसका अपना झुकाव एक मखसूस नजरिए की तरफ से था लेकिन ये कहना कि 45 46 47 में में कॉम्युनिस्ट पराया वुड बी इन करेक्ट राधर in the 45 46 election in punjab the communist party worked very closely with muslim league especially in organizing peasantry and things and generally in the wave of an anti colonial nationalism we don't talk about it that much india mein zyada baat hoti hai hum log apni sirf muslim league muslim league kehte hain 
But amongst a certain kind of educated elite, these were all people who were anti-colonial. ठीक है आप मुस्लिम लीग के साथ हैं आप कांग्रेस के साथ हैं आप कम्युनिस्ट पार्टी के साथ हैं आप किसी और तंजीम के साथ हैं बट द आइडिया ऑफ गेटिंग रेड ऑफ द ब्रिटिश वॉज ऑल्सो जोड़ता था लोगों को ना लोग गद्दार नहीं कहते थे एक दूसरे को ये कह सकते थे कि आपका तरीका जो है वो हमसे मुख्तलिफ है लेकिन सो इन अ वे दीज पीपल मे हैड इंटेलेक्चुअल डिस्कशन एक दूसरे का मजाक भी उड़ाते होंगे लेकिन देवर ऑल द कॉम्युनिस्ट वर नॉट पीपल हुर और पीपल हैविंग कॉम्युनिस्ट सिंपथीज वर नॉट uh were not considered enemies of the state initially right and they were all sort of on the same thing that you know we have to get rid of the british ye to baad mein aista aista jab you know cold war hua aur duniya do teen hisson mein bati aur fir uske baad uski jo ideological permutations hamari riyasat mein aayi and riyasat ne kaha nahi you know and there were ways in which the american uh influence started the british influence was already there there were all these cells created which i have written in the book as well and i've seen it in different archives in american and british archives that there were cells created to counteract communist influences right in uh, influence rather i'm sorry to ye sab to baad mein hua us waqt to log bhai sab jo aa rahe the ke bhai ye mera dost hai ye hum college mein saath the tumhare paas jagah rehne ko nahi hai mere paas raho you know irony of irony sirte saab aaye और वो जिनके साथ रहते थे जिस जस्टिस साहब के घर पे रहते थे वो उनके भाई उनके बेटे उनके दोस्त थे एंड लेटर ऑन दैट सेम जस्टिस वाज द प्रिसाइडिंग जज इन पिंडी कॉन्स्परेसी केस सो ये तो यू नो पीपल वर टेकिंग रेफ्यूज इन डिफरेंट प्लेसेस में एक और कहानी आपको एक जेड अहमद साहब की बता सकता हूँ लेकिन वील वेट फॉर दैट वील वेट एंड यू विल टेल दैट की थोड़ी देर में उनकी बात करेंगे अभी करना चाहेंगे आप मैं कह देता हूँ जैद अहमद साहब थे आई डोंट नो इफ ऑल ऑफ यू और योर रीड और योर लिसनर्स नो द नेम ऑफ डब्ल्यू जैद अहमद बताइए डब्ल्यू जैद अहमद वाज अ मेजर ही हैड अ वाज अ मेजर फिल्म प्रोड्यूसर एंड डायरेक्टर उनकी एक पुणे में प्री पार्टीशन ही हैड ही हैड अ स्टूडियो कॉल शालिमार स्टूडियोज एंड देन ही कम्स हियर तो डब्ल्यू जैद अहमद साहब जो थे वो यहाँ आके उन्होंने 58 में एक बहुत मशहूर फिल्म भी बनाई थी संतोष और सबिया के साथ वादा और उसमें एक गाना बहुत मशहूर है जब तेरी गली से शहर से गुजरता हूँ आई डोंट नो इफ पीपल इवन रिमेंबर पाकिस्तानी सिनेमा फ्रॉम 50s एंड सिक्सटीज एनी वे डब्ल्यू जैद अहमद साहब के एक भाई थे बड़े जैद अहमद ये आठ नौ भाई थे और और बहने भी थी और सब थे और तो डब्ल्यू जैद अहमद साहब के भाई थे एक जैद अहमद और वो कम्युनिस्ट पार्टी में होते थे इंडिया में एंड देन इन 48 ही केम बिकॉज देर वॉज सम रिप्रेशन नेहरू के जमाने में और कम्युनिस्ट पार्टी के इंडिया के भी अपने कुछ मसाइल थे बट वेन ही कम्स हियर जैद अहमद इनिशली स्टेट विद डब्ल्यू जैद अहमद नाउ इस्टेब्लिशिंग हिमसेल्फ एज अ मेजर स्टूडियो ओनर उनको इवैक्यू प्रॉपर्टी में स्टूडियो मिला था एंड अ प्रोड्यूसर इन पाक इनिशिएट एंड इन द इनिशियल फेजेज ऑफ पाकिस्तानी सिनेमा एक्चुअली हिज फर्स्ट मूवी रूही Uh, came out in 1948 and it was ban- the pakistan's first movie that was banned because of class and all that depiction of class uh, uh, tensions and conflict irrespective from there uh, zaid ahmed goes to karachi and he stays with his other brother and who is actually a superintendent of police and another brother is a magistrate तो आप सोचिए और फिर उनको इतनी मुश्किल हो गई कि फिर वो वो जो है राजस्थान के जरिए वापस हिंदुस्तान चले गए बाद में जैद अहमद जो है वो यूपी के कम्युनिस्ट पार्टी के सेक्रेटरी जनरल बने एंड उसके बाद जो हपर हाउस है इंडिया का लोकसभा में उनकी बेगम हाजरा बेगम बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट फिगर कामिल खान मुमताज की बहन थी एंड वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इन दी फेमिस्ट एंड दी लेफ्ट मूवमेंट इन इन इंडिया दैट्स अनदर हिस्ट्री दैट वी डोंट हैव अ वेरी courageous women is also sajad zahir's wife razia sajad zahir an amazing contribution writer uh, progressive activist feminist and translator of uh, of various literature so this is uh, i'm not sure where this is going but i'm just giving you stories about people and a world that existed at a particular moment which was interconnected but also was sort of uh, uh, you know had ideological underpinnings had ideological underpinnings and while they were uh, fighting uh, or struggling for a, a class war of a so- sort ji bilkul long to the class that they were struggling against bilkul bilkul in me se bahut se to english san mein padhe hue the bilkul bilkul dost ramaya 
प्रोग्रेसिव राइटर्स एसोसिएशन भी वहाँ ही कायम की बिल्कुल आपकी दोस्त फरमाया तो तो ये जो कॉन्ट्रडिक्शन थे उनकी वजह से तो इनकी कोई ग्रास रूट कनेक्शन थे इनमें से कोई ऐसा था जो सचमुच एक जिस जो वेस्टेड हो क्लास स्ट्रगल में जो सचमुच वेस्टेड हो जो जिसका पाँव एक इस तरफ और उस तरफ ना हो जो देखिए तो... आपकी बात दुरुस्त है आई थिंक ये जो जो लीडरशिप थी वो बुनियादी तौर पे तो जैसे हम कहते हैं अशराफिया से आई थी ये तो बात दुरुस्त है और बहुत कम ऐसे थे जिनका खुद जो है वो वर्किंग क्लास से ताल्लुक था और लेकिन ये कि जाहिर सी बात है उनके यहाँ एक रवायत थी कि हमें डी क्लास करना है अक्सर लोग बम्बई में भी जो कम्युनिस्ट पार्टी थी वो इन सबको चाहे वो कैफी आजमी हो चाहे वो सज्जाद जहीर हो चाहे वो जो भी आप नाम बड़े बड़े सोचती हैं ये कैफी आजमी इनके शबान आजमी के वाले साहब जो शायर थे या सरदार जाफरी हों या जिनके और बहुत सारे नाम डांगे हों ये सब एक कम्युनिस्ट पार्टी के हॉस्टल में रहते थे और सबके पास एक एक कमरा होता था और सब जो है वो रोज उनके लंगर में वही दाल बनती थी थिंग्स लाइक दैट सो देर वॉज अट ऑफ वे इन फ्यूचर वो वर्किंग क्लास में जाकर और वहाँ मुख्तलि तरीके से काम करना या यू नो यूनियन की स्ट्राइक करवाना या सियासी तौर पर बात करना करना तो ये तो एक था लेकिन जाहिर सी बात है वो खुद से उस तबके से नहीं आए थे अच्छा जो भी कहिए सज्जाद जहीर साहब को वो आए थे बहुत ही जैसे कहना चाहिए अच्छे ना सिर्फ पढ़े लिखे बल्कि इकतसादी तौर पर इकनॉमिकली वेल टू डू फैमिली से थे लेकिन उन्होंने कभी अपने खानदान से पैसा नहीं लिया ये हद तक इस हद तक कि जब वो जेल में भी रहे पाकिस्तान में उनकी बेगम रजिया सज्जाद जहीर जो खुद एक बहुत ही इस्टेब्लिश अजमेर के खानदान से आई थी उनके भाई वगैरह भी पाकिस्तान आ गए थे एक रेलवे में भी थे पुलिस में भी थे और मैं आपको नाम बताऊंगा अब नहीं बताना चाह रहा हूँ लेकिन उनकी बहन उनकी भाइयों की शादी जिन खातन से हुई हमारे यहाँ हाशिम रजा साहब थे कमिश्नर कराची पता नहीं आप जानती हैं या नहीं या नाम सुना है हाशिम रजा साहब जी जी बिल्कुल हाशिम रजा की जो सालियां थी वो इनके दो भाइयों से निकाही थी रजिया सज्जा जहीर के तो आप सोचिए कि पाकिस्तान की भी जो एलिट थी उसके अंदर इनकी यहाँ शादियां हुई थी और तो मैं और भी नाम ले सकता हूँ लेकिन यू नो हुई ना कि जो सो कॉल अच्छे खानदान थे मतलब खाते पीते पढ़े लिखे बिल्कुल बिल्कुल हाँ दे मे नॉट बी मतलब तो एनी anyway, वो वो सारा कुछ था अब यहाँ पर जिन लोगों ने अपने आप को डी क्लास किया और जो है वो मजदूरों की तहरीक के साथ जुड़े कुछ लोग थे यहाँ पर पाकिस्तान के अंदर जिन्होंने इस तरह का जो उस तबके से आए थे और लेकिन इसमें वहाँ लेट्स टेक अ डी नॉट अ डी टोर लेकिन इसमें ये कहना जरूरी है कि जो हसन नासिर थे उन्होंने वो भी बहुत ही एक पढ़े उनके वाले डॉक्टर थे वो हैदराबाद से आए थे उनके खानदान में लोग जो थे अगेन पढ़े लिखे और इस्टेब्लिश और अपर मिडल क्लास के खानदान था लेकिन वो अठारह और बीस साल की उम्र में वो भी इसी तरह आए कि सी पी ने उनको कहा कि आप सी पी आई ने कहा आ जाए और उन्होंने अपनी जिंदगी बहुत हद तक वफ कर दी थी मजदूरों के साथ रहने में तो जो हमें थोड़ी बहुत सुनगुन मिलती है फिफ्टीज की दिहाई में पचास की दिहाई में दिफ्टीज डेकेड ऑफ हसन नासिर यू सी हेम डेफिनेटली वर्किंग एंड लिविंग अमंग वर्किंग क्लास एंड यू आप कराची तो जानती हैं देर इज अ प्लेस इन कराची वी कॉल सोल्जर बाजार राइट डू यू नो दैट एरिया जहाँ जमात खाना है सोल्जर बाजार सो सोल्जर बाजार अब तो वहां पर वो बहुत कुछ है गार्डन का इलाका है तो उसको उस जमाने में दे यूज टू कॉल इट स्टैल एंड ग्राड बिकॉज अ लॉट ऑफ वर्कर्स कम्युनिस्ट पार्टी का कराची के अंदर इन दोर्टीज बीड़ी वर्कर्स में बहुत काम था और बहुत सारे बीड़ी वर्कर्स सोल्जर बाजार में रहते थे एंड हसन नासिर वॉज वेरी इन्वॉल्व देयर एंड ही वुड गो एंड गिव क्लासेज एंड वी हैव मेमोर्स और राइटिंग वर्कर्स देयर हुट कम फ्रॉम प्ले अ लॉट ऑफ बेरी वर्कर्स हैड कम फ्राम पार्ट ऑफ साउथ इंडिया केरला से आए थे कर्नाटका से आए थे और मुख्तलि जगह से आए थे बिकॉज इन दिस इज इवन प्री पार्टीशन बिकॉज एक ही मुल्क जहाँ नौकरी मिलती थी लोग जहाँ साउथ इंडिया से उठ के बम्बई और लायलपुर में टेक्सटाइल था वहाँ चले जाते थे कराची पोर्ट सिटी था डॉक्स पे काम करते थे सो आई थिंक 
अपने हसन नासिर का ये था दैट ही उनकी जो तारीख है जो भी थोड़ी बहुत मिलती है इट्स काइंड ऑफ अ पर्सन इन द शेडोज बट जिनसे भी खबर मिलती वो ये था कि ही वॉज वेरी मच वर्किंग अमंगस्ट एंड लिविंग अमंगस्ट द वर्किंग क्लास इन कराची विच वॉज ऑल्सो सिटी दैट वॉज गोइंग थ्रू रैपिड इंडस्ट्राइजेशन एंड द नंबर ऑफ uh in uh, you know industrial workers was increasing uh, just to give you a perspective of uh, uh, combined uh, india only 9% of the industries of all of british india was in in areas that was then what that became pakistan east bengal and west pakistan only 9% and a lot of the more organized workers uh, just a union kahiye ya organized were in the railways on both sides in east bengal as well as in west uh, west pakistan especially in lahore with the mogalpura uh, you know uh, railways locomotive ki jahan banti thi and other things and in in bengal there were some people also in the tea gardens and in, in silhet and others so uh, again i i keep on apologizing not because i don't have much to say but i don't know if this kind of uh, rambling account is of any <laughs> पाकिस्तान में सिर्फ नौ फीसद थी और इंडस्ट्री जो पूरे बड़े सगीर की थी तो उससे ये भी फिर समझ आती है कि कम्युनिज्म और तो उधर ही पकड़ता है ना और लेबर यूनियंस वगैरह जहाँ इंडस्ट्रियलाइजेशन हो जी और जब तक आपकी लेबर ऑर्गेनाइज नहीं कर सकेगी और इंडस्ट्रियलाइजेशन नहीं होगी तो वो उस किस्म का मूवमेंट बहुत मुश्किल से चल सकता है और हमने आई मीन मार्क्स ने भी तो रेवोल्यूशन को इंडस्ट्रियलाइज नेशंस में देखा ये तो नहीं सोचा था कि के बहुत ही एक फ्यूडल रूरल रीजन में आएगा रेवोल्यूशन तो इधर रुकते हैं दो मिनट और वापस आते हैं इस गुफ्तु को जारी रखने के लिए शुक्रिया जी तो कामरान हम हसन नासिर की बात कर रहे थे और उनके बारे में मैं थोड़ी सी और आपके साथ गुफ्तु करना चाह रही हूँ और मुझे भी एक अभी आपसे बातें करते करते एक ख्याल आया कि मुझे याद है कि मेरी अम्मी मुझे बताती थी या बताया था उन्होंने कि हसन नासिर को मेरे नाना अच्छी तरह से जानते थे और उनके चंद दिन पहले उनके गिरफ्तारी के चंद दिन पहले वो रात के वक्त मेरे नाना से भी मिलने आए थे और उन्होंने आके ये कहा था कि ये आखिरी बार है कि हम मिलेंगे और बस दैट्स ऑल इससे आगे ना मुझे कुछ पता है ना इससे पीछे कहानी का लेकिन आपके आपके अगर मैं सवाल पूछूं तो आपके नाना का उनसे कैसे रिश्ता था आपके नाना भी सियासत में थे या उनसे खानदानी या वैसे कोई मेरे नाना राइटर थे मखमूर अकबर आबादी उनका तखलस था अच्छा 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 और वो भी उस अपने तौर पे पसंद मुसनफीन में साथ होंगे पसंद और इंडिया की जो स्ट्रगल थी ब्रिटिश के खिलाफ उसका हिस्सा थे और जी जी तो वो ही बात आ गई ना ये सब लोग एक दूसरे को जी जी, जी बिल्कुल दुरुस्त फरमाया आपने नहीं बिल्कुल और मैं थोड़ी सी बात आप सवाल पूछिए माफ कीजिएगा तो उन्होंने मिले थे तो आप इस वक्त आप चाह रही कि मैं हसन नासिर के बारे में कुछ कहूँ या आप कुछ नहीं जी थोड़ा सा और इस मैं गुफ्तु को इस तरफ इस डायरेक्शन में ले जाना चाह रही हूँ थोड़ा सा जस्ट टू बी डेबल एडवोकेट हियर कि आपने ये जिक्र किया ना कि जो जो दूसरे थे वो इस साथ एक हॉस्टल में भी रहते थे जहाँ वो दाल रोटी खाती और जबकि वो एक अशरफिया क्लास के लोग थे लेकिन तो उससे मुझे एकदम ख्याल आया कि जो जिस तरह से इंग्लैंड में उन्नीसवीं सेंचुरी की सेटलमेंट हाउसेस बनाए गए थे जी जो जो वेल टू डू घराने के यंग लोग हैं वो आके उन गरीब इलाकों में आके पढ़ाएं लिखाएं बिल्कुल बिल्कुल उनकी जगह रहने की ऐसी हो जो उनके 
سطح کی ہو ان مناسب ہو ان کے لیے رہنے کے لیے کس لیے کہ وہ غریبوں کے ساتھ تو نہیں رہ سکتے تو والد صاحب اور ان کے جو کمیونسٹ دوست تھے ان کو دیکھتی ہوں یا دیکھتی تھی تو ہر وقت یہ مذاق سا ہوتا تھا کہ غریبوں کی جب ہی بات ہو سکتی ہے جب پیٹ میں کھانا ہو کھانا ہو کچھ پینے کو ہو وغیرہ وغیرہ تو آئی ایم ناٹ ٹرائنگ ٹو ڈسپیرج اینی بڈی بٹ آئی ایم ٹرائنگ ٹو سی کہ کیوں ہے کہ حسن ناصر جو تھے وہ ان کو قتل کیا گیا کیا کچھ اس کی وجہ وجوہات یہ ہو سکتی ہیں کہ وہ سچ مچ لوگوں میں تھے وہ سچ مچ ایک کلاس اسٹرگل میں تھے اس حد تک کہ وہ رہتے ان کا رہنا سہنا بھی لوگوں کے ساتھ تھا نہیں دیکھیے بہت خاصی پچیدہ بات ہے ایک چیز میں دو تین چیزیں کہہ دوں ایک تو یہ کہ ہم یہ کہہ سکتے ہیں کہ ہاں لوگ تھے اور بعد میں جن لوگوں کو ہم نے دیکھا اپنے لڑکپن میں یا جوانی میں اپنے آپ کو بائیں بازو کا کہتے ہوئے ان کی جو رہن سہن کا طریقہ وہ بہت مختلف تھا لیکن بہت لوگ ایسے بھی تھے جنہوں نے واقعی ان کی ان کی بہت ساری تنقید ہو سکتی ہے لیکن انہوں نے یو نو زندگی جد و جہد میں گزارتی جب ان کا انتقال ہوا تو ان کے پاس کوئی کوٹھیاں نہیں تھیں یا ان کی شادیاں بہت دیر سے ہوئیں تو ان کے بڑھاپے میں ان کے بچے چھوٹے ہی رہ گئے اس طرح سے بہت ساری چیزیں جو ہیں وہ مطلب نیک نیتی پہ شک نہیں کرنا چاہیے ٹھیک ہے ان کے بہت ساری نہیں آپ نہیں کر رہی ہیں میں کہہ رہا ہوں اکثر لوگوں کی یہ تنقید ہوتی ہے بہت سارے لوگوں نے بہت کچھ جو ہے وہ گوایا اور بعد میں اس پہ وہ ان کی ایک بٹرنس بھی تھی کہ دیکھو ہم ہم نے کچھ نہیں کیا زندگی میں اور ہمارے سے کم عقل رکھنے والے اور لوگوں نے جو ہے بڑے فائدے اٹھائے کیونکہ پاکستان آنے کے وقت جو ہے وہ بہت لوگوں نے اس طرح سے بھی تو فائدے اٹھائے نا یہ ویکیو پراپرٹی مل گئی ہماری وہاں یہ تھی لوگوں نے بڑی دولت کمائی جی ہاں ہاں تو آپ کو تو اندازہ ہے تو ایسا نہیں تھا اکثر کے اور جو حسن ناصر کے حوالے سے بھی بہت سارے ایسے لوگ تھے جنہوں نے ریاست کی تشدد اور جبر سہا اور جس کے وجہ سے بہت سارے لوگ پیچھے بھی ہٹ گئے اور بہت سارے لوگ جو ہیں وہ رعایت لے کر اپنی اوسط درجے کی جو خاندان یا مطلب یو نو افڈلی موبائل ہونے کے لیے انہوں نے وہ کمپرومائزز بھی کیے اس میں کوئی شک نہیں ہے لیکن بہت لوگوں نے بہت کچھ گوایا بھی اور ان کے نام بھی ہم نہیں جانتے ہیں جو کہ اڑتالیس میں انچاس میں پچاس یا اکاون میں جن کے نام پر ہزاروں مزدور نکلتا تھا جن کے ہم نام بھی نہیں جانتے ہیں اور وہ بھی جو ہے اشرافیہ ہی سے آئے تھے تو میں کھوج میں لگا رہتا ہوں لوگوں سے پوچھتا رہتا ہوں فلاں آپ کو جانتے ہیں فلاں کسی کو جانتے ہیں اور یہ نہ صرف وہاں سے ہندوستان سے آنے والے بلکہ سندھ میں پنجاب میں اس وقت جو این ڈبلو ایف بی آج کے کے پی کے میں ہر جگہ اس طرح کے لوگ تھے جنہوں نے جد و جہد میں شامل رہے اور بڑے عرصے تک رہے ایک تو یہ بات تھی دوسری بات بفور آئی گو ٹو حسن ناصر دیکھیے ہندوستان کے اندر جو یعنی کہ جو برٹش انڈیا تھا اس کے اندر ہمارے پاس کلکتے میں جوٹ احمد آباد میں بمبئی میں چنائی مدراس میں انڈسٹریلائزیشن ہمارے ہاں جیسے میں نے پہلے عرض کیا کوئی ایسا نہیں تھا نو فیصد تھے اور یہاں پر ظاہر سی باتیں جیسے آپ پہلے بھی ذکر کر رہی تھیں کہ وہ پرول تاریہ کا جو ایک تصور ہے کہ وہ بنے گا تو پھر انقلاب آئے گا اٹس اے ٹیلیولوجی وہ ایک تاریخ کو دیکھنے کا طریقہ ہے جو مارکس کا ہے نا کہ اور وہ جو ہمارے ہاں جو کہ بنیادی طور پہ ایک ذرائع ملک تھا اور ہمارے پاس چین کا انقلاب آ چکا تھا انچاس میں اس کا اس طرح سے اثر نہیں ہوا تو ہمارے ہاں پر ہیپس جو آئیڈیولوجیکل جو محور تھا ہمارا وہ ابھی تک وہی تھا کہ بمبئی اور احمد آباد کی فیکٹریوں سے مزدور نکلیں گے اور انقلاب آئے گا لیکن جو جسے ہم آبجیکٹو کنڈیشن کہتے ہیں انگلش میں اور معروضی حالات جو کہتے ہیں اردو میں آئی مین آر آبجیکٹو کنڈیشن سوسائٹی اینڈ ٹو ری تھنک دا ہول ایشو آف آف سوشل چینج آف ٹرانسفارمیٹو چینج اور سارٹ آف اے سوشلسٹ ریولیوشن not taking account the issue of the peasantry uh jo hai na wo bhi ek tarah se hamare yahan ek blind spot tha hamare jo cp ke jo membran the us waqt baad mein aur is pe tanqeed bhi hoti rehti thi isme bahas bhi hoti rehti thi isme andar khud tanqeedi bhi ho self criticism bhi hoti thi so these are kind of thing i'll i'll i won't go into this issue more let's come to hasan nasir uh you're absolutely right 
what happens is that the uh, Communist Party is banned in 1954. It's not banned in 1952 during the Pindi conspiracy goes. It gets banned. It's banned in 1954 after you can listen to your listeners or not. In March in the March, there is an election in Bengal. And the election is Fazil Haq, who was also in the United States. Fazil Haq, who was also in the United States, with the support of Awami League, but also of Jukto Front, who was also in the group, who was also in the United States. और दो तीन महीने के अंदर मनीषा साहब वहां पर हंगामे शुरू होने लगे मुख्तलिफ फैक्ट्रियों में मुख्तलिफ जगहों पे और फिर यही आजकल का जमाना था मई वगैरह का जमाना था आजम जी जूठ मिल जो कि पाकिस्तान में पहली जूठ मिल लगी थी और सरकारी पैसों से लगी थी स्टेट फंडिंग क्योंकि उससे पहले हमारे यहाँ होती तो थी पर्सन जूठ but it used to go to Calcutta and near Calcutta was most of the jute mill. So this was the first jute mill, which was the Adam G's key. It was a big riot. And it was a lot of people who were killed. And it was a way of Lassani Fasad, Bengali, Bihajobi. And in that case, there was a governor rule. And that, uh, uh, and Sikandar Mirza, who later on becomes the president of Pakistan and then brings in martial law in 50, it becomes the governor. He was a defense secretary. Hmm. Of uh, of East Bengal and the and Fazal Haq's elected government, which had defeated Muslim League, Muslim League couldn't stand it. Uh, so, us waqt ban hoti hai Communist Party. Acha, uske baad jo hai, log pakde gaye, phir bhi aur jail mein gaye, phir nikle. Hasan Nasir us waqt mulk badar ho jate hain. Unko kaha jata hai ke aap Hindus mulk badar ho jaye, to wo Hindustan chale jate hain apne abai Hyderabad. Wo Hyderabad dakhan se the. And he stays there, but after two years he comes back. और उनका ये कहना था और वहां पर अब मैंने उनकी अब की वालदा की कुछ खतूत पड़े और लोगों के खतूत पड़े तो उनका ये कहना था कि नहीं मैं कराची के मजदूरों के साथ रहता हूं और मैं कराची के मजदूरों के साथ मैंने पला बड़ा मतलब हिंदुस्तान का मेरे पास बहुत एहसान है मेरा खानदान यहां है मुझे खिलाया है और सब कुछ है और मुझे कोई ऐसी नफरत नहीं है लेकिन मेरा जो काम है वो कराची के मजदूरों के साथ है और वो अपने साथी से कहते हैं दिस इज अ इंटरव्यू दैट आई रेड फ्रॉम दैट टाइम कि देखो हमारा काम यही है हमारी हमारा इंतकाल यही होगा और हमारी कब्रें भी यही होंगी सो दैट्स अ काइंड ऑफ थिंग दैट ही लीव्स आई मीन ही कुड हैव स्टेड इन पाक इन इंडिया और इंडिया में उस वक्त तक नेहरू और कम्युनिस्ट पार्टी ऑफ इंडिया की जो है वो ताल्लुकात ऐसे कोई कशीदा नहीं थे दे वर फाइन एंड यू नो ही कुड हैव बिकम पार्ट ऑफ इवन इफ ही वांटेड टू रिमेन इन द कम्युनिस्ट मूवमेंट ही कुड हैव हैड अ मच मोर uh in a secure life right but he comes back to pakistan mm -hmm. and then he us waqt nayab banti hai uske wo office secretary bante hain and then 58 ke jab martial law hota hai usme wo mustaqil underground rehte hain maneer sahab i don't know if your audience would be interested or not but my assumption is that there are lots of tensions in the communist party mm -hmm. itself which has gone underground which has been banned in 54 and there are tensions there kuch logo ka ye kehna hai और कुछ लोगों से मैंने बात भी की है जो गुजर चुके हैं तो आई वोट टेक नेम्स के देर वर ऑल दीज सॉर्ट ऑफ काउंटर क्लेम्स एंड क्लेम्स अबाउट हु केम फर्स्ट फ्रॉम इंडिया हु हैज द राइट टू बी द लीडर एंड हु डजेंट हु शुड बी ट्रस्टेड हु शुड नॉट बी ट्रस्टेड देर वॉज अमकोर्स आई लॉट ऑफ इन्फिल्ट्रेशन एंड दी वॉट पीपल से इज दैट ही वस्ट हैव बिन दे मस्ट हैव बिन सम वन हु बेसिकली स्नेच्ड राइट एंड ये बिकॉज वो जो आपके नाना के पास आए हैं वो जो आखिरी वक्त में ये और अयुब के जो मार्शल लॉ के जो पहले दो तीन साल हैं उसमें बहुत सख्त लेबर पे भी और जो अंडरग्राउंड कॉम्युनिस्ट थे सब पे बहुत लोग जेल हुए और तो वो मुस्तकिल सर्वेलेंस में रहते थे बल्कि जो एक मोहम्मद अली महालबाड़ी साहब हैं जिनके मैं जिन्होंने बाद में सिक्सटीज में इंटरव्यू दिया वो बहुत करीब थे हसन नासिर से तो वो यही कहते थे कि निश्तर पार्क है ना सोलो बाजार के पास वहाँ कभी ये सोते हुए रूपोश होते थे सोते हुए पस आए के कि तुम्हारे पास एक रुपए है दो रुपए हैं तो मैं खाना खा लेता हूँ या उस जमाने में ये पी बन रहा था अगर लोगों को कराची का अंदाजा है जो कायद आजम का जहाँ मजार है उस शार कायदीन ये सब खाली इलाका था तदफीन तो हो गई थी लेकिन ये जो बड़ा मजार नहीं बना था और ये शार कायदीन जहाँ ग्लोब का एरिया ये सारा ये लोग रात भर टहलते थे और मतलब वो बिल्कुल परेशानी के हालत में होते थे उनके पास कहीं जाने का नहीं होता था इसलिए वो आपके नाना या किसी लोग के पास कभी चले जाते होंगे खाना खा के फिर वहां से निकल जाते होंगे उनके अपने हाँ माफ कीजिए उस वक्त मेरे नाना और मेरी अम्मी 
पीर इलाही बख्श कॉलोनी हाँ तो वो वहां दूर नहीं है वहां से जहां मैं बात आपसे कर रहा हूँ ना पी आई भी दूर नहीं है जेल के पास है और द पॉइंट इज के इनके एक मामू पी सी एस आई आर में थे डॉक्टर साहब डॉक्टर जैदी और भी लोग थे ऐसी इनके अपने खानदान के लोग थे और आ, अच्छे आपको पता है बहुत सारे पढ़े लिखे लोग थे तो रिश्तेदार भी होंगे और भी लोग थे जिनके पास ये जाना आना रहता था लेकिन ये जो वक्त था उस वक्त इतने लोग खौफजदा थे कि मेरे ख्याल है कोई अपने घर में उनको आ, रखने को मतलब रात भर एक रात तो रख लिया लेकिन वैसे रखने को तैयार नहीं था तो इस हालत में मेरे ख्याल मुखबरी हुई और उनको गिरफ्तार किया गया जी 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 और और फिर फिर ये गिरफ्तार होते हैं में में नहीं के अगस्त वगैरह में और फिर इनको लाहौर कराची से इनको भेज दिया जाता है लाहौर और वहां पर जो किला है उसका एक हिस्सा जो कि अब आर्कियोलॉजिस्ट के पास है अट्ठासी तक एटी एट तक जो था वो आ, हमारी इंटेलिजेंस ब्रांच या सीआईडी आई कहिए या उनके पास होता था और वो बुनियादी तौर पे वो जो इलाका था वो प्री पार्टीशन से वो जो इनके लाहौर फोर्ट के अंदर किले के अंदर एक हिस्सा है जो के विच वाज अ टॉर्चर सेल और वहां इनको रखा गया और तो तेरह नवंबर की बात है या चौदह नवम्बर की बात है और ये तो एक मेजर इसाख थे जो पिंडी कॉन्स्परेसी केस में भी थे वो फिर मेजर थे उन्होंने छोड़ दिया उसके बाद वकालत की बाद में मजदूर किसान पार्टी उन्होंने बनाई थी मैप में भी थे तो वो अपनी सवान उम्री में लिखते हैं कि दैट ही वेंट टू फैसा फैसा उस वक्त तक जो है वो आर्ट्स काउंसिल में उनके कोई अहदा था लाहौर आर्ट्स काउंसिल में के हैव यू डू यू नो वेर हसन नासिर इज सो फैसा आपने कहा कि नहीं उन्होंने कहा कि मुझे ये खबर मिली है कि फला फला था और उसने जो है वो बहुत टॉर्चरिंग हसन नासिर तो उन्होंने फिर एक हैपिस कॉर्पस की एक रिट शाया की वो कोर्ट में डाली राइट शाया नहीं की मतलब ही पुट अपील ऑफ अटिस कॉर्पस टू शो द बॉडी और हुएवर यू नो दिस पर्सन इज इन कस्टडी and on based on that on the this is around middle of november the uh, and i think mehmood ali kasuri who's a big constitutional lawyer by then he sort of supports it because major saab was not a big lawyer then and in lahore high court or lahore session court and then the issue comes up that uh, that's when the state uh, or the police or the intelligence branch says that oh what happened is that uh, he uh, killed himself by hanging himself with his uh, uh, pajama cord azarban se apne ko latka liya aha to phir unhone kaha ke theek hai to then uh, you know bring the body to unhone kaha ke nahi wo to humne dafna diya hai phir unki amma aati hai and this case goes on and then the body is exhumed mm -hmm. right and uh, the body is exhumed and the mother basically uh, says that this is not the body of my son she refuses to uh accept that this is because the size of the body and it's already decomposed and things like that right mm -hmm. so we don't know what happened uh, to the body but definitely through if not eyewitness but circumstantial evidence it's clear that uh, he uh, was tortured to death right in the cell uh, what they argue what they what the dsp and the different kinds of jail uh ka jo amla tha jo the they were saying oh basically he had uh, basically given names and he was so guilt and we were transferring him back to karachi and he would have been released so but he was so full of anxiety that he had given names of other comrades that because of that he became depressed and uh, and in, had severe guilt and that's why he committed suicide you mm -hmm. understand the story right i mean yeah. it's it's a uh, but uh, what we know from people who were close to they i i wouldn't say that there's any sort of eye witness like i said but people who were close to his cell or were present in the uh, lahore uh, ports those torture chambers so say or better cheese kehne ki nahi hai sort of talk about the daily uh, screaming and uh, and the you know mm -hmm. real real horrible क्या कहिएगा नॉइज कहिएगा या क्या कहिएगा जो आती थी उनके सेल से तो बेसिकली एटलीस्ट देर इज 
at least i mean who knows what the truth is but what what we think it happened is that he was tortured to death well the truth i have a feeling kamran is what resonates in the hearts of people and uh, most everyone who remembers that time carries this close to their heart that hasan nasir was tortured to death and that he was a hero and, oh, yes. and so therefore i i i believe that um because it's a it's a wound in the hearts of uh it was a wound that was in the hearts of many regardless Gee. of what their ideological standing uh, might have been um uh, um uh, how about um i i haven't quite understood the rawalpindi conspiracy case it's what a curious thing it is <laughs> हाँ देखिए उसकी बहुत वो हैं और आयशा जलाल साहबा ने भी लिखा है जहीर साहब गॉट डॉक्यूमेंट्स यू नो दिस इज अ सिविल सर्वेंट जहीर साहब ही गॉट द डॉक्यूमेंट्स फ्रॉम द ऑफ द केस एंड ही इज पब्लिश्ड अ बुक अदर पीपल हैव रिटन सम पीपल हैव रिटन मेमोआज हु आर पार्ट ऑफ द कन्विक्टेड ग्रुप लाइक जफर पोशनी साहब ही वॉज अ कैप्टन लेटर ऑन ही बिकेम उन्होंने जिंदगी जिंदगी का नाम है वो अंग्रेजी में भी जिंदगी जिंदा वो लाइक द प्रिजन जिंदा दिल्ली का नाम है इंटरेस्टिंग टाइटल एंड जफर पोशनी साहब ही पास फ्यूर्स अगो ही फील्ड बट इनिशली कैप्टन एंड देखिए मेनी वर्जन दे मेनी स्टोरीज बट लेट मी स्टार्ट विद वेर आई एंड माई आर्ग्यूमेंट इज दैट इफ देर वॉज अ कॉन्स्पिरसी और नॉट आई मीन एवरी वन सेज देर वॉज एंड बेसिकली दिस वॉज अ there were some military officers under major general akbar khan who was pretty senior i mean you know we didn't have at the time of partition people who were already brigadiers or generals we had people who were at the major and lieutenant colonel level mm -hmm. and the head of the army was general gracie who was uh, who was a british and mm -hmm. there were a lot of british officers in air force and army and the navy right mm -hmm. maybe 4 500 who had stayed behind on deputation and uh, so all of a sudden the colonels and the majors who had seen some had seen the burma some had seen europe some had seen singapore and malaysia you know things like that even our our <laughs> 80s hero zayul haq was in in malaysia i think he was a lieutenant and he almost drowned and you know it's <laughs> all these stories right but all of a sudden there were promotions right because we needed senior people you know so all of a sudden people who were lieutenant colonels became brigadiers or majors so there was a so it was a young army and there was some dissatisfaction around kashmir where major general akbar who may have been uh, instrumental uh, was uh, called the hero of uh, kashmir in 48 49 and there were some disgruntled officers that you know we could have done more in kashmir but the line of uh, i think under international pressure whatever it was i'm not sure but there were some uh, but the other things were that the uh, like for instance in the army the um, british had uh, were going to give a surplus uh, air for uh, air uh, from aircraft from uh, from uh, second world war whereas the younger pakistani uh, air force officers uh, who had come from the british air force or the indian air force uh, said that you know why should we take these things we should modernize or you know how many gdp pilots should we have or in in quetta the british uh, under the british command we were being created as a listening post for uh, for russia whereas the local person there said nahi aisa nahi hona chahiye so there was all these nationalist feelings right you know that the pakistan's army uh, or pakistan's sort of defense forces should be oriented towards pakistan's own security rather than being second fiddle to what the british or the americans want here does that make sense yes yeah so that was one part of it and uh, that started and then with ayub khan being the who was who was not senior to me to akbar but you know same thing and he becoming the first uh, uh the the first uh, pakistani uh, commander of the pakistan army yeah. uh after gracie left uh, they must have been internal tension anyway major general akbar khan kept on talking to people and some of that information was leaking out right so he was also brought into the jail and then through certain contacts and this is very interesting his wife now these wives play interesting role 
was close to the sort of the Lahore elite. His her mother uh, uh, was also uh, an Arai and very close to Jahanara uh, Kazalba. Uh, you know, wo unka jo tha relationship thi unki jaise Mia Tharudin the jo ke left of Muslim League, pehle Communist Party mein bhi the Sajad Zahir, Faiz, Faiz ki dosti thi un logon se. Mm-hmm. Faiz pehle uh, jo the wo uh, journalist the. Uh, in the, he was in he was a in the war he was a lieutenant colonel in the ISPR in the in the uh, press corps. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, but then after that he became uh, editor of Pakistan Times, which was Mr. Khairuddin chalate the. Ye jo Pakistan progressive papers tha, Imroz or Pakistan Times ke wo publisher the or Faiz was the editor. So unki if jab wo Kashmir ke uspe jaate the ye log apni reporting ke liye during that time unki mere general Akbar se dosti thi Lahore mein logon ki dostiyan thi somehow the communist party started talking to the these this group of officers right mm-hmm. and after a few things uh, there is an event in mere general Akbar's house in uh, Rawalpindi which basically they talk about it. Now, the question is, and from people's memoirs, from other kinds of writings, from police report, that nothing was decided, right? There was no such thing as a conspiracy, but there were sort of issues around, say we will create a coup and this and that, but then nothing was decided and the Communist Party did teen log gaye the, Mohammed Atta, Faiz Ahmed Faiz and Sajjad Zaheer, although Faiz is never a Communist Party card-carrying member. Ye bhi mm-hmm. Aur wo gaye the unke Khadija <laughs> sahiba ki motor pe. Unki. <laughs> now the full it. circle happens, right? Let's give and, it a color. Let's give it a color. We'll make it yellow. Ah, yellow achhi rahegi. Red kiyo nahi bana deti hai? Red hi bana deti hai. It's too obvious. Let's make it. Thoda camouflage hona chahiye. Yellow is nice. Yeah. To beetle thi unki. You know, the old folk song. Beetle mein Lahore se ja rahe hain pindi. Haan, Lahore se pindi. Jab us wane mein jo jo bhi hoti hai. Grand trunk road. Chhe saath ghante lagte the. Aur wo gaye wahan par. Achha. Kamran. Jee, bolye. Phir se batayye. Maaf ki chega. Gaadi mein kaun kaun hai? हां तो मेरे ख्याल है फैज साहब थे सजाद जहीर थे और एक एक अता साहब थे हसन अता मोहम्मद अता वो एलडब्ल्यूएफपी के थे अता साहब ने बाद में कम्युनिस्ट पार्टी खत्म कर दी आप पता नहीं आप कराची में पली बड़ी हैं मनीरा साहब मैं जी मंगला तरवेला और लाहौर में पली बड़ी हूं अच्छा अच्छा तो मंगला तरवेला अच्छा आपके वालिद अच्छा अच्छा दैट्स इंटरेस्टिंग Tarvela mein TJ wo ha wo jo Italian se aur Bangla mein America acha to your father was in I, I don't know this doesn't have to be in the well, thing. Ha, ha. To, uh, anyway to Karachi ke andar ek jahan Rio cinema tha hai tha uske samne ek standard book uh, company hoti thi jo ke Russian kitabein bechti thi aur uske piche ek ahata tha jahan ek bahut mashhoor bar tha wo Atta saab chalate the baad mein और वहीं जाके ये लोग सब जब आते थे 60s में 70s में तो वहां बैठक होती थी मैंने अपने लड़कपन में वो इलाका देखा है और वहां स्टैंडर्ड बुक से हम किताबें भी खरीदते थे तो मोहम्मद अता साहब जो थे कम्युनिस्ट पार्टी छोड़कर उनको कहते हैं लोग बिजनेसमैन बन गए थे बट ही वुड ही वाज रनिंग दिस बार देयर इन द हार्ट ऑफ कराची राइट एट जेबिनस स्ट्रीट एंड थिंग्स लाइक दैट बट एनीवे दिस इज अ डिफरेंट हिस्ट्री सो व्हाट हैपेंस इज दैट देयर वर पीपल हु uh, were in that meeting in Rawalpindi at uh, Major General Akbar's house, uh, who basically, there was a police inspector and there was another person, they became, uh, they go and sort of uh, uh, report on them. And that's how then everyone is uh, captured. And then it's a huge uh, uh, news that, you know, this coup was going to happen and we found this communist cell and this and that. And so the army was going to coup. And now, I think, and then there was a case basically that the government and then, you know, the the prime minister would have been murdered. The governor general would have been murdered. He was going to be in Karaj, in Rawalpindi, uh, uh, Ali, and, and then the the army under uh, Akbar Khan, uh, Major Akbar and his colleagues, uh, there was a Janjua Saab the Air Force K, or we looked there. They were a, so they would have taken over and things. Why? Because uh, the government was not, uh, uh, you know, doing the kind of, you know, they were sort of subservient to the British and they were subservient to the Americans. The 
national policy was not very progressive. There was sort of uh, democratic rights were not being uh, honored. The uh, you know there are all kinds of nationalistic and quasi-democratic kind of impulses. Now, did you see an accusation or was this a fact? No, this was the accusation. This was the allegation. This was the accusation. This was the case against them. Most probably they must have discussed it. But I don't think anyone was, they may or may not have. My problem is that why did the communists sort of go there and get into a discussion with the military, right? Yes. Military coups and push to hote rehte hain ya nahi hote rehte hain. Yeah. Could it be for the same reasons that we just discussed who were the communists? Ke bhai, sab ek dusre ke yaar dost hai. रात खाना हुआ अपने दोस्त जनरल अकबर के घर अरे अकबर खाना करवा रहा है बड़ी अच्छी भी मिलेगी चलो चलो गाड़ी में बैठो चलो अब कौन सबने ज्यादा पी ली किसी ने कहा भाई खूब करी <laughs> नहीं हो सकता है आई थिंक दैट इज अ गुड वे दैट इज नॉट अ गुड दैट इज वन प्लॉजिबल वे ऑफ थिंकिंग अबाउट इट एंड देयर मे बी सम ट्रूथ इन इट आई थिंक व्हाट आई हैव रीड दैट देयर वर सर्टेन डिस्कशंस पीपल हैव डिफरेंट वर्जंस ऑफ व्हाट द पार्टी अग्रीड और डिडंट एग्री आई मीन वन ऑफ द थिंग पार्टी सेट आप जाइए और मना करके आ जाइए क्योंकि ये इनडायरेक्टली ये बातें हो रही थी और फिर वहां जाके आप जाइएगा जब पिंडी में मीटिंग होगी तो आप मना करके आइएगा बट देखिए वेदर कॉन्स्पिरेसी थी या नहीं थी आपकी बात दुरुस्त है एक देखिए कॉम्युनिस्ट इनकलाब का आना यह है कि भाई प्रोलतारिया होगी एंड देन द प्रोलटेरियट वुड बी देयर एंड वील हैव अ इंसरेक्शन हमारी पहिया बंद होंगे स्ट्राइक्स होंगे एंड देन यू नो वी कम विद पॉपुलर सपोर्ट राइट इवन द 1917 यू नो रशियन रेवोल्यूशन वेदर इट वाज एज पॉपुलर नॉट बट देयर वाज स्टिल सपोर्ट अमंगस्ट द पीपल एंड इवन द आर्मी सपोर्टेड देम टू अ डिग्री राइट बिकॉज़ इट वाज अ वेरी वोलेटाइल एंड a difficult time in europe but also the war and all that kind of stuff to yahan par to koi aise objective conditions the nahi na aapke paas party thi party mein aapke paas thi party usme ek 200 log honge jo ke full timers honge aapka koi aisa mass front pe asar rasukh nahi tha aapka koi aise kaam bahut zyada phaila industries nahi thi to kya hoga right to peasantry mein waise hi kaam nahi tha so aapka ye khayal tha ke agar farz kijiye hum aa jate hain Uh, अगर इनकी हकूमत ये कू से आ जाते हैं तो ये फिर हमें रियायत दे देंगे हमारे ऊपर जो यू नो दे दे वर नॉट बैंड दे वर ऑलवेज अंडर लॉट ऑफ सर्वेलेंस उनके लोग उठा लिए जाते थे उनकी पब्लिकेशन बैंड कर ली जाती थी उनके पब्लिशर्स को जो है वो जब्त कर लिया जाता था कि इतने पैसे दोगे तो फिर तुम्हें पब्लिशिंग करने देंगे आप जो है वो मजदूरों में यूनियन बाज यूनियन नहीं कर सकते थे देर इज अ लॉट ऑफ सर्वेलेंस एंड ऑपरेशन राइट तो वो समझ रहे थे कि इसके वजह से हमारे ऊपर कुछ जो है वो और फिर हमारा जो प्रेस है जो भी पाकिस्तान टाइम्स या इमरोज वगैरह उसमें हम और हमारे रूस से ज्यादा अच्छे ताल्लुक हो जाएंगे हम एक सो बेसिकली थ्रू द बैक डोर यू आर ट्राइंग टू ब्रिंग अ मोर कोट एंड कोट प्रोग्रेसिव थिंग व्हिच वाज इफ इवन इफ इट वाजंट अ कॉन्स्पिरेसी एंड इवेंचुअली यू सेड आई आर नॉट गोइंग टू गो फॉरवर्ड विद इट जस्ट द आइडिया ऑफ टॉकिंग टू द मिलिट्री टू गेट सम काइंड ऑफ अ कोट एंड कोट ओपनिंग फॉर योर सेल्फ थ्रू द बैक डोर is itself very problematic was it such a terrible idea ji so uh, but it was just a bunch of rich not rich but privileged people talking to each ah, other so it is say dekhiye na baat ye hai ke ek ideological ye log dekhiye na jo log aaye wahan se and they were not also the cpi ke sabse bade intellectuals mhm sipte saab ne apni ek kitab hai jo ke jafar ahmed jo pakistan studies center ke the हैं के डायरेक्टर थे बहुत नफीस स्कॉलर बहुत काम किया उन्होंने तो उन्होंने सिप्ते साहब की जो मैन जो अनपब्लिश चीजें हैं वो एक सिलसिले सिलसिले के तहत छपवाई हैं जाफर का बहुत काम है इस पे डॉक्टर जाफर अहमद का तो तो उसकी एक उसी किताबों के सिलसिले में एक एक सिप्ते साहब की एक समझिए सवान उम्री है या मेमोर है तो उसमें वो यही लिखते हैं कि हम लोग जो हैं वो एक दिन हमें सज्जाद जही ने कहा कि चलो बैठकर जो है वो एक पाकिस्तान के ऊपर जो है वो लेन मार्क्स को पढ़कर कुछ लिखा जाए अच्छा वो बहुत तहकीक हुई लिखा गया लेकिन उससे वही नतीजे अखज किए गए जो कि बिल्कुल यू नो दे सॉर्ट ऑफ सेम मेन लाइन के यूं होगा तो यू नो वेरी सॉर्ट ऑफ रिजिड 
mm-hmm. and not imaginative and not linked to the kind of conditions they were living in right unki apni ek tanqeed hai apne kaam pe ke wo usi mein wahi sari jo hai lafazi baat thi you know so ha so basically not getting anything from that because they were not trained scholars you know you have to understand that they were not people who like in the communist party in iran or the communist party of india there were people who were seriously engaged in certain kinds of discussions and could also sort of think about the indian situation in light of how in marx as a 19th century intellectual did not really understand the colonial world or the world of uh, of uh, south asia right i mean for marx in 1857 he argues uh he writes uh, in his uh, article he used to write for a new york uh, publication and says that in 1857 it's awful what is happening in india and everything but through this <clears throat> you know the kind of killing and massacre that happens after 1857 of uh, of uh, indian people he said yeah ye to bahut bura ho raha hai lekin through this a more advanced society will come in and there will be industrialization and then there will be proletariat and then revolution will come so basically condemning the violence of the british but through them thinking of history as it will progress so basically you can you know destroy and kill and murder and c- c- create mayhem in india because eventually it will lead to some kind of revolution so yeah i mean he didn't actually understand the situation here and the what kind of society it was here he had this kind of uh, uh, kind of a uh, european notion of these places aur woh hum log jo hain wo aqaz karke sorry go ahead i'll just argue that he wasn't saying well here's the plan let's let's kill a lot of people and then there'll be a revolution he was basically commenting ki bhai ye ho gaya hai to isme se uh, you know there is the the chance that this would lead to upheaval and change that you know people are uh, there's been a massacre or, or uh, the, and there will be more to follow and this will eventually lead to what he was giving that as a plan and a strategy that that this was okay he was commenting on that was he not kamran aap marx ki baat kar rahe hain marx ki baat kar ji nahi he was but the point is that uh, it was also a reflection of a certain kind of way that marxist or, or more sort of uh, uh, marxism has a certain kind of teleology right that you know a feudal society or a is more backward than a capitalist society right so the idea of uh, yes that killing and think one has to sort of condemn them but also capitalism will come and destroy the sort of the feudal structure of society and which is a next stage and which is a progressive stage so it was based on that kind of notion of history right in stages so feudalism ke baad capitalism aayega capitalism ke baad socialism aayega things like that and that te- teleology is sort of you know even in europe it's difficult to <laughs> talk about but it's a model that may have worked in europe but it doesn't have to work everywhere mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. uh uh yeah hey, i mean that's a sort of a my own sort of thinking about uh, uh, it's not that one one doesn't agree with with a lot in marx but there are ways in which there are blind spots and ways of thinking about the world so uh, especially in go ahead no no especially what no no especially when we look at uh, uh, you know a uh, social change from the perspective of the global south mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. exactly i was going to say that when i was interrupting you uh, actually that when you put in that layer of colonization into the 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 mix then then uh, the you know marxist theory needs to to shift and you have to come up with a, a new kind of thinking yeah that applies to the kind of experience of, of those nations that were uh, were under colonization because even the people who uh were in the the communist party uh in uh pakistan they all were actually of a colonized mind themselves not a, uh, this is not a fault of theirs it was just their context uh it it was hard to uh to to break out of that and and really connect to their their people in in really meaningful ways that were not what they had learned in uh, in england or or ha- the notions that they had picked up in in europe am i am i somewhat correct 
नहीं नहीं आप बिल्कुल देखिए लेट मी पुट ऑन माय एंथ्रोपोलॉजिस्ट हैट एंड एक्चुअली अ लॉट ऑफ द पीपल देखिए हमारे यहाँ तो ये होता है कि यू नो वी आल्सो फील हैव अ कंसेंसस स्पेशली दोज हु हैव हु सॉर्ट ऑफ थिंक अबाउट इनलाइटनमेंट द प्रोग्रेस ऑफ द वेस्ट एंड यू नो व्हाट सिविलाइजेशन इज वी आर सॉर्ट ऑफ थिंकिंग अबाउट इट इन सिमिलर वेज तो बट Uh, I'm saying my hat as an anthropologist is the kind of indigenous roots. I'm not talking about nativism or you know things like that. But there are lots of things that are, uh, hum, jo hai unko uh, we don't think of it as uh, as progressive, which are sort of local. Even in the in a simple way, you know, the the the, the proletariat is the vanguard, right? Not the peasant, right? Mm -hmm. So these are sort of I mean being very superficial here, and one can think about it. But the issue of art, show of uh, uh various kinds of aesthetics and creative attempts of course it's a it's a heritage it's a global heritage but we always feel that we, like a lot of time when we were young and i was impressed by that and said oh this we we don't have in our culture we don't have an opera right or we don't have a da vinci or something like that right you know so uh and and when i first went to european museums i was so impressed i said my god this is sort of the epitome of uh of aesthetics and creativity right so those are the kinds of ways that we have have been produced or reproduced as uh, uh, as understanding that a certain kind of jaise kehte hain ke tarakki ki jo mehraj hai wo kahin aur hai aur hum to hum to train station mein baithe hain jabki gaadi chhoot chuki hai right so we are always catching up हमारे यहाँ डेमोक्रेसी सही नहीं है हमारे यहाँ ये सही नहीं है हमारे यहाँ वो सही नहीं है आई एम नॉट सेइंग हमें कोई नेटिव सिर्फ चीज या कोई मजहब के तरफ जाना चाहिए बट आई एम कहें कि ये एक रवैया है हमारे अंदर और ये भी उनके बिल्कुल कूट कूट के कॉन्शियसली और अनकॉन्शियसली हमारे बाएं बाजू के लोगों में भी था और है तो कमरा इधर रुकते हैं फिर फिर गुफ्तु को जारी रखते हैं जी ब्रेक करें या अब हम ये बात कर रहे थे कि इतना ज्यादा वो कॉलोनाइजेशन की वजह से एक वैल्यू सिस्टम बन गया जिसमें यूरोप से जो ये ख्याल आ गया कि दिमागों में कि आइडियाज कैन ओनली एमिनेट फ्रॉम यूरोप हमारी जो कुछ चीज चीजें हैं या सोच है वो सब वो ही वहां ही से आएगी और आ, और आ सकती है वो और जो हमारा अपना है वो तो उसके सामने कुछ भी नहीं है बिकॉज हम तो शिकस्त में है ना तो और हमारी शिकस्त इसीलिए है बिकॉज हम उनसे कम थे तो वो एक एहसास कमतरी एक बहुत ही आई थिंक ये सब लोग टू सम डिग्री दे वर हीरोइक दैट दे वर स्ट्रगलिंग अगेंस्ट दैट बट दे वर स्टिल विक्टम्स ऑफ इट और इसी तरह से आप कह रहे हैं कि मैं सोच रही हूँ कंपेयरिंग के जो कम्युनिस्ट पार्टी के जो आ, हम देखते हैं लीडरशिप उस जमाने की और फिर मैं उस जमाने की फिफ्टीज की मैं बात कर रही हूँ आप ही की बातों से मैं ये निकाल रही हूँ बात कि जो मिलिट्री के लोग थे वो भी तो एक हमारी पाकिस्तान में एक बहुत यंग मिलिट्री थी बस सोट ऑफ हाफ बेक्ड हाफ कुक मिलिट्री विच वॉज बींग प्रमोटेड though they may not have been ready for those promotions and they were being put into positions of decision making and power when they were not ready or trained for that to phir unke bhi decision making jo thi wo usi tarah se flawed thi and 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 everybody was making colossal colossal mistakes in the choices they were making nahi aapki baat durust hai dekhiye na isme sirf ye dekhiye सितम जरीफ ही यह है कि एक चीज एक तरह से हम नहीं देखते हैं उसमें मेरा कोई ऐसे कोई पाकिस्तान नेशनलिज्म के हवाले से नहीं सोच रहा हूँ देखिए दिल्ली जो है वो दारुल खलाफा ब्रिटिश इंडिया का कैपिटल बन जाता है आफ्टर कैलकटा इन द अर्ली ट्वेंटी सेंचुरी राइट लोटन दिल्ली बनता है बट देन दोल सॉर्ट ऑफ इन्वेस्टमेंट इन ब्यूरोसी एंड थिंग्स एंड लॉट ऑफ द पीपल हु रन ब्रिटिश इंडिया अपार्ट फ्रॉम द ब्रिटिश आर इंडियन slowly and gradually are indians a lot of, and many of them are not muslims right mm -hmm. and so when you come to karachi which is sort of a which is a small city which is not even uh, i mean sindh ka capital hai to lekin bahut established nahi hai to jo hamare pressures the yani ke aap uh, you know uh, sindh assembly ki building thi jo ke national jo ke hamari parliament bani 
बट लोगों को बैठने की जगह नहीं थी ब्यूरोसी जो पाकिस्तान क्वार्टर का इलाका है या जो टीन की छत के साथ जल्दी जल्दी लोगों को यू नो द होल सॉर्ट ऑफ वे इन विच कंट्री हैड टू स्टार्ट वर्किंग इट्स सिविल सर्वेंट्स हैड टू बी हैड टू गेट हाउसिंग देर ऑफिस हैड टू बी मेड पेंसिल्स हैड टू बी शार्प सो इट्स अ बिग बिग चैलेंज विच इंडिया डेंट फेस वन the other thing is that because uh, the from the level of uh, muslim civil servants and uh, uh, army officers they were not like you know uh, they were young right or koi account se aa raha hai koi finance se aa raha hai koi fauji jahan se bhi aa rahe and so but they were also trained in a certain kind of a bureaucratic tradition or civil service tradition or in a military tradition mm -hmm. to which was sort of basically uh, in an undemocratic setup in a in a colonial setup right so wo hum mai baat hai to yahi hota hai 50s mein ke aapke paas jo military hai aur jo civil service hai theek hai very soon after uh, jinnah passing away and liaquat ali's uh, murder khaja nazimuddin is sort of sidelined and uh, and ghulam mohammed and skandar mirza and all these people these are bureaucrats mm -hmm. and bogras even the prime ministers who are become chaudhry mohammed ali these are all bureaucrats right and they basically take on and these bureaucrats who their primary training 10 15 20 years ago is in the british civil service mm -hmm. which is basically the the lord and master right they are not into democratic traditions or parliamentary traditions and things like that they have no grassroots constituencies they have not been elected through parliamentary system aur jo log hain us tarah ke unko sideline kiya jata hai unko bangal mein aur sindh mein aur even in punjab those mm -hmm. people are either sideline 56 tak to election uh, aapka uh, constitution hi nahi banta hai aur fir wo presidential system hota hai uske baad wo election jo ho rahe the wo postpone hote hote the unhone martial law laga diya because the whole argument was that this country is not ready for a democracy it has to be a controlled democracy ye sab argument the na skandar mirza wagaira ke jinki ab kitab chhap gayi hai aur har shakhs jo hai unki waah waah kar raha hai aur log keh rahe hain aapne padhi hai aur uske launch pe aaye but you know these are i mean there it matters that who has who took the decisions that sort of derailed our democratic tradition right and uh, because he lived 10 years in exile doesn't make him a martyr यकीन रखती हूँ की चाहे मैं एग्री करूँ या ना एग्री करूँ सबको हक है नजरिया देने का तो लेकिन मैं आपकी बात सुन रही हूँ और आप जनरल न्याजी की जो मेमोर ओयूपी ने छापी आई मीन वी नो वट जनरल न्यासी डेड और वट ही वॉज और नॉट बट यू नो दैट परसपेक्टिव शुड ऑल्सो बी देयर फॉर अस टू सॉर्ट ऑफ एनालाइज हाउ द वॉर इन uh in east pakistan and then bangladesh was executed right so i for a for a, on from a scholarly point of view i find it quite uh, important mm -hmm. but i'm just saying that these are also actors and characters in our history who were primarily not very democratic right and who wanted to con basically unka bhi yahi tha ravaiya aur jo aap keh rahi thi na ravaiya communist party ke hawalon se unka in logon ka bhi yahi ravaiya shayad tha communist party walon ko to main थोड़ा सा आई गिव दम लिटल बिट ऑफ स्पेस बिकॉज उनके पास तो पावर नहीं था कि बेसिकली ये जो कौम जो है ये ये अभी तैयार नहीं है और हम अगर इनको राह रास्त पे नहीं लाएंगे या हम डिसीशन नहीं करेंगे एंड दैट सॉर्ट ऑफ कंटिन्यूज इवन टिल टूडे दईडिया दैट टेक्नोक्रेटिक सोल्यूशन बिकॉज द पीपल दम सेल्व डोंट नो वी कैन वी नो वट इज राइट एंड हाउ डिवेलपमेंट विल हैपन हाउ दे लाइफ विल बी चेंज and we will sort of uh, monopolize the decision making and and uh, and arz karu ek lafz add kar do ji aapne technocratic ka main kahungi ki isme patriarchal bhi bahut oh bahut zyada wo to kisi mein se nahi nikalta chahe aap communist ho ya jo bhi ho nahi wo apni in logon ki jo apni niji zindagi pe to ja 
मैं उस तरफ नहीं जाना चाहता था क्योंकि जब आप चीजों को कुरेते हैं और लोगों से बात करते हैं और खातन से और मर्द सबसे बात करते हैं तो बहुत सारी ऐसी चीजें आती हैं सामने जो कि इंसान वो खुल के बात नहीं कर सकता और कुछ लिहाज कर लेता है लेकिन ये आपकी बात बिल्कुल दुरुस्त है थोड़ी सी उनके बात करनी चाहिए ना कि हाँ मैंने लिखा है अगर आप मेरी किताब के फुट नोट देखिएगा तो उसमें बहुत सारी ऐसी चीजें हैं जो कि झलकियों से ज्यादा है लेकिन फुट नोट्स में मैंने बल्कि वो हमारे एक दोस्त थे बहुत गरीबी दोस्त हैं आई मिस हिम अलॉट इमरान असलम जो इमरान को आप जानती होंगी तो इमरान अमेजिंग जर्नलिस्ट एंड अ डियर फ्रेंड ओल्डर देन मी बट वेरी क्लोज एंड काइंड ऑफ तो वो हमारी जब किताब की रुनुमाई हुई टी टू एफ में 2015 या 16 में तो वो यही कह रहा था कि इस किताब में जो है वो किताब को ना पढ़ो आप यू नो ऑल द गॉसिपी स्टफ इज इन द फुट नोट सो आई सपोज आई हैव सम ऑफ दैट देयर रावल पिंडी में और यार दो सारे एक शायर एक जनरल जी जी पुलिस वाला और क्या बातें हो रही होंगी यू नो एक दूसरे के को पीठ पे थपका भी मारे जा रहा होगा कह के भी लगाए जा रहे होंगे और सबको ये ख्याल होगा कि हमें ही पता है कि मुल्क कैसे चलता है और किस तरह से हर बात का उन्हें ही पता था हाँ लेकिन वो तो खैर वो तो पता नहीं कह कह लगे या नहीं लगे या बातें हुई या लेकिन ये कि वो तो सीरियसली किसी चीज के बारे में सोच भी रहे होंगे आपकी बात सही है लेकिन जो बेशक उनकी प्राइवेट एक्शंस एट दैट मोमेंट आई डोंट नो बट आई थिंक द लार्जर क्वेश्चन इज जो आप कह रही हैं वो बिल्कुल सही है कि uh, ये दुनिया को सुधारने चले थे लेकिन अपने नुक़ नज़र के हवाले से बगैर लोगों को साथ लिए हुए राइट अब उसमें कम्युनिस्ट पार्टी ने फैसला किया था जाने का या नहीं वो तो एक अलहदा है लेकिन उनके साथ बैठने की भी क्या जरूरत है फौज को तो छोड़ें फौज का तो काम ही है कि वो अपने अपने हुक्म को जो है लोगों पर मुसलत करे इट्स अ काइंड ऑफ अ ट्रेडिशन दैट यू नो ऑर्डर्स आई हैव टू बी ओवेड एंड वी नो बेटर एंड वी गोइंग टू सॉर्ट दीज पीपल आउट बट आई थिंक पीपल हुसेंसिबली बिलीव इन डेमोक्रेटिक नॉर्म्स एंड इन एंड पॉपुलर विल why were they sitting with them that's my question right whether they agreed with them or not eventually but this is not a way to bring social change that was my problem with this so uh... well, the actions don't meet their words ji ha matlab ye ke galtiyan hoti hain galtiyan hoti hain i think you know i mean i didn't go into a detail of uh, the late 40s in communist party of india where a very uh, radical move by uh, the cpi uh, the cpi in 1948 uh, removes uh, at the calcutta conference where the decision of pakistan is it removes its uh, uh, leadership uh, pc joshi and everyone and brings in a much more radical leadership under uh, ranadeep and ranadeep what he does is that ke dekhiye now uh, the moment is uh, partition ho gaya and this is the sort of insurrectionary moment so pakistan is at a not pakistan india is at a stage in its history where russia or soviet union was in 1917 the same kind of teleology right so the next step is revolution and intensify your struggle whether the people were prepared or not there was such a lot of uh, disturbance and insurrection you know strikes and this and that and then the repression of the indian state comes down very heavy i mean nehru with all his uh, is uh, democratic credentials was his government and uh, sardar patel was the home minister was extremely brutal against the communists but these communist parties were also very suspicious of their own cadres who were opposing them that's why zadi ahmed and uh, comes to pakistan hiding from his, not from the nehru government but from his own people from his own it's only in 1950 there's a shift because uh, this you know for, for international reasons and others that this group is sort of sidelined and a new kind of uh, equivalent uh, equilibrium starts happening in communist party of india that then has an effect on the communist party of pakistan but i think it was just too late because these guys had already started having this kind of discussion under the rubric that this is the moment of the final push and uh, forward right 
So there were all these sort of ways of thinking about how the world was changed and a kind of a hurry to get to the next stage because somehow history had to had already sort of given us this chance without understanding the the social uh, circumstances under one un, under which one was living. I, I don't know if this is confusing, but I think there's a complicated kind of a history, back history to what the Pindi conspiracy case, uh, why the Communist Party in Pakistan and Sajjad Zaheed and his colleagues went into this kind of discussion. I think they, they, they were in a bit of a rush and they thought that this was the moment of some kind of, uh, you know, uh, to sharpen the contradiction so that the next stage, uh, the birth of the next stage, it's a very, I like I said, it's a telos, it's a theological history, which people start believing as if uh, really the world moves like this. And it, as an anthropologist, um, would you say that it might be worth looking at why the Communist Party seems to have been so successful in other parts of the subcontinent like Kerala? Uh, that what is it about Kerala and its culture? No, so, Bikina, Kerala, maybe. I mean, in 1958, uh, that's the first uh, province that uh, uh, wins uh, popular vote uh, uh, in uh, the Communist Party uh, and Namrudripa, then all that. And, and Nehru is sort of totally upset, right? Because he didn't think that the Congress would be ever defeated. The next time they win is CPM in Calcutta, in West Bengal in 77. And I think the success in Kerala was basically because the Communist Party did a lot of grassroots work. And they decided that we will go the, we would not go the way of insurrection, but we will go the way of bourgeois politics and participate in elections. Mm -hmm. And through becoming part of a parliament and creating democratic norms, we will give the kind of uh, uh, will bring social change in terms of you know uh, literacy or health or uh, you know uh, social insurance or employment whatever it is right whatever but it was they had to the extent that as you know that you know today Kerala has the largest number of uh, literate Indians and uh, the kind of uh, I mean they may not all be. Uh, you know, living in palaces, but there is a definitely uh, 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 the level of poverty there, the level of access to health, it may have changed, but at least under the communist uh, provincial government. So, this is the thing. They have done it, and then they came from the election. Yes, absolutely. They came from the election, and then they kept it. And where they couldn't do it, then they were very difficult. But in 1958, Nehru was stunned. I mean, Nehru was so, so uh, upset because Nehru was also a draconian person. He didn't understand that his popularity will never be less. Now I want to take you uh, right back to 1958. Uh, personality that you speak about. Uh, talk to me about Nazir Abbasi. Who was he? Wo to bahut hi halka sa maine message kiya, mention kiya hai. Wo to bahut, uh, mein khale, uh, mein wahan tak pahuncha nahi tha. Nazir Abbasi jo thai, wo uh, Sindh ke andar, uh, this is in the late 70s. Mm -hmm. And uh, wo skin mein jo underground communist party thi, uska jo student wing tha, SNSF. Mm -hmm. Sindh National Student Federation or Sindh ke the. Mm -hmm. Or uh, he was a Bunyadi uh, he uh, jab martial law aata hai. Uh, I mean, this I have not written in the book, but I'm just telling you because I was young and I was in college when he he was murdered. So Nazir Abbasi, uh, wo jab martial law lagta hai, ka, then there's also a crackdown against uh, whomever the uh, martial law government thought of as uh, their ideological enemy, right? Or but aate hi agar aapko yad ho ya aur logon ko yad ho, bahut sari is tarah ke measures aaye against. Uh, ek to shuru mein People's Party ke hawale se wo piche logon ke gaye, aur phir bahut sare jo hai wo laws against. Uh, 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 kya kehte hain use press jo hai na sahabiyon ki azadi wagaira ke hawale se to wo ek puri tehreek chali thi sahabiyon ke huquq ke liye aur usme tulba bhi shamil the aur jail wagaira gaye log 
and then what he started doing is that uh, in various ways people were being picked up and tortured and uh, things like that there were also spectacles of uh, of uh, people being uh, publicly uh, uh, whipped uh, mm -hmm. if you remember in stadiums and you know things like that and not only criminals but also political uh, figures right and even journalists and things like that and then in the so there were lots of things happening and i think uh, people there was of course nascent mrd movement thodi der se hui but there were other kinds of ways in which sin uh, was under a lot of surveillance and uh, nazira basi was picked up and then it may have been uh, if i may be correct in saying summer or fall of 1980 uh mm -hmm. that he was uh, that he was killed uh in custody mm -hmm. and he was a student... he was in the communist party ke asme the and uh, ostensibly he was a student leader at uh, snsf kehte hain usko sind national student federation mm -hmm. and he was in jamshero uh, or uh, ha uh, sind mein the i mean he may may have been uh, i don't know if he was actively uh, he may have been enrolled in sind university in jamshoro but i don't think if he was sort of attending classes and things i think he was more sort of organizing uh, various kinds of platforms that could resist the martial law government mm -hmm. but bahut logon ko uthaya us zamane mein communist party ke logon ko nakvi saab ko uthaya rasul bakhsh palijo ko bhi uthaya wo uthaya wo bhi the 80s mein jail mein the jamal nakvi saab the ehsaas nazir ko to nahi jo communist party mein the these are all underground leaders and uh uh jamsaki uh unko uh, he was uh, there and others kuch log jail mein the kuch log jo hai ruposh rahe pure uh, ziya ke zamane mein uh, imam ali nazesh and others so, but these are people who were uh, who were still very act well underground active in the communist party or what remained of the and this is i'm talking more about the pro moscow communist party right not the uh, pro china because in the 60s that split already happens mm -hmm. and i think the pro moscow communist party became more problematic for the zia regime i'm not saying that there wasn't oppression of other groups or communist groups or the maoist groups they'll get upset at me because of the especially after 79 the uh, the soviets coming into afghanistan and that becoming a major contradiction between ziaul haq who had uh, who very soon supports uh, the american sort of uh, uh, adventure there of creating the mujahideen right mm -hmm. and the uh, you know basically ziaul haq is internationally unpopular but the uh, what happens in afghanistan and the soviet uh, forces coming into afghanistan to sort of defend whatever they thought was a revolution or not uh that creates a space for the americans to find an ally in pakistan and zia and zia gets a second life on mm -hmm. the international stage uh and with the huge amounts of military and otherwise funding and the creation of mujahideen who then later on now we you know the americans created these sort of pre taliban forces to us waqt jo hai wo pro soviet jo groups the that came under a lot of suspicion mm -hmm. तो वो कोई बहुत बड़ी ताकत भी नहीं थी मनीजा साहबा और ना के वो कुछ कर सकते थे बट यू नो आई थिंक एनी काइंड ऑफ डिसेंट इवन इफ इट्स वेरी माइन्यूट इज इंटॉलरेबल टू सम पीपल यस एंड व्हाट अबाउट द डीएसएफ द स्टूडेंट डीएसएफ देखिए डीएसएफ की दो हिस्ट्रीज हैं एक डीएसएफ जो है वो अब जो आपके सुनने वाले हैं शायद उनको बेहतर पता हो एक तो डीएसएफ जो थी ना वो कॉम्युनिस्ट पार्टी के साथ थोड़ी किसी हद तक मुंसलिक थी और तो कुछ लोगों का कहना है वो लहदा भी थी इन द फिफ्टीज लेकिन फिर वो बैन हो गई थी जब कम्युनिस्ट पार्टी बैन हुई फिफ्टी फोर फिर उसके बाद वो एनएसएफ की शक्ल में हुई शुरू में तो वो लेफ्ट के हवाले से भी नहीं थे लेकिन सिक्सटीज में एन एस एफ बिकम्स अ वेरी मेजर लेफ्ट ओरिएंटेड स्टूडेंट ग्रुप डी एस एफ फिर से बनी जो है वो एटीज में जब जो है मुख्तलिफ ग्रुपों ने इकट्ठे होकर लेफ्ट की और एस एन एस एफ और सब उन्होंने फिर से जो है वो डेमोक्रेटिक स्टूडेंट फेडरेशन विच वॉज अगेन लूजली कनेक्टेड टू दी अंडरग्राउंड कॉम्युनिस्ट पार्टी और एंड डज इट स्टिल एग्जिस्ट द डी एस एफ I'm not so sure. I'm not. Uh, I don't think <laughs> it may be. I don't know. I don't. Know. I'm sure. That I I do know that the Communist Party 
does exist and there must be other there are many communist parties and groups and factions and things like that there is a communist party of pakistan there are other smaller groups and i'm sure dekhiye tulba siyasat to san 1984 san 84 se band hui bhi hai right aur uske baad kuch uh, kuch uh, tulba jamaaton ko ya uh, marath mini kuch nahi mili jaise ab 80s mein jo hai wo tulba siyasat to khatam ho gayi lekin اسلامی جمعیت طلبہ جو تھی جو جماعت اسلامی کی تنظیم تھی اس کو جو ہے وہ اسپیس ملتی تھی اے پی ایم ایس ہو آل پاکستان مسلم یہ مہاجر اسٹوڈنٹ ایسوسیشن آرگنائزیشن جو ہے جو ایم کیو ایم کی تھی ان لوگوں کو اسپیس ملتی تھی لیکن بائیں بائیں اور پھر وہ مختلف قسم کی کراچی کے اندر خاص طور پہ اس طرح کی بھی جو ہے نا وہ قومیت کی بنیاد پہ ایک نو بلوچ اسٹوڈنٹ فیڈریشن فلاں پختون تو وہ چیزیں ہوئی اور کراچی میں آپ کو پتہ ہے کہ لیٹ ایٹیز میں تو یونیورسٹیز میں خاص طور پہ جو ہائر ایجوکیشن کی جگہیں تھیں انجینئرنگ یونیورسٹی یا کراچی یونیورسٹی یا میڈیکل کالج وہاں تو خاص اس طرح کے خاص طور پہ جس طرح سے افغانستان میں ہو رہا تھا اور جس طرح سے ایک کلش کلچر ہوا اور you know the arms were very easily available so there was a lot of killings and a lot of firings and things like that i suppose that sort of led to a certain kind of reason to sort of make all our medic all our uh, edu- institutions of higher education into camps right you can't it's not a freely i mean universities are places where you should be going in and coming out and should be open and there should be freedoms now you go to universities there are always these sort of armed guards and you have to show your identity and things right so in a way the encampment of uh, of security forces in university sort of at least in karachi sort of harked back to that moment in the 80s so any kind of a chaotic situation and uh, any kind of uh, allows for uh, for uh, for these security agencies to sort of intervene and the middle class parents says ha ha khatra hai khatra hai and then mm-hmm. and that happens in the country as well you know <laughs> chaos hota hai aur phir martial law aa jata hai and we will bring order right we will bring safety and things like that wo shuru mein to hota hai lekin uske baad it becomes something else yeah in this moment uh, as you sit in uh, austin and i sit in new york there's an interesting that thing you say about karachi university uh, in uh, 1980 as zia moves uh, security forces in there to to quell uh, students uh, it feels like columbia and absolutely uh, or my university i mean we were pe- very much part of the the state troopers here absolutely i'm saying that what a dangerous thing it is the, this moment uh absolutely through this to you know freedom of speech and to students especially yeah. and they and proud of them i mean i'm really yes. proud of them they lead and we follow and i've been very closely aligned with all of them and other colleagues have been not me but uh they have been very brave uh, very very brave oh, and uh, and uh, great and uh, and they they are uh, you know they are so morally and ethically uh, absolutely right. um let's segue to to your uh, more recent um work uh, kamran towards uh, people's uh, histories in pakistan i i assume that this book of yours is very much connected to what has gone before in your work and nee bilkul dekhiye and uh, inshallah i mean right now bloomsbury ne chapi hai it's kind of unaffordable but uh, i'm just uh, saying that you know in november we'll have a paperback from and then most probably we'll also have a, it published in pakistan at least in english which would be more uh, make it more readily available I, because i think mera kaam to khair chode there are chapters here the whole impetus was that you know i don't know if people know howard zinn a uh, historian the unhone people's history of united states likhi thi uh-huh. so uh, basically on histories that are not told in in, uh, in the way nationalist histories are written right or uh, jaise ke masculinist history ho ya big men ki history ho ya Uh, uh leaders ki history ho right who gets left out are at least in american history are native americans african americans uh, you know uh the diversity of gender and sexual 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 identities people have uh the issue of workers the issues of various kinds of struggles against uh, capital 
So various uh, histories are left aside or, uh, you know, women strikers, uh, women who are union or strike or, or leading a strike in, in uh, mostly immigrant women leading a strike in Lowell, Massachusetts, in textile mills or, you know, things like that, like in the 30s and 20s. We don't have that history or if it is, it's very academic, but not popular. So Howard's in, so inspired by that and then another tradition of writing history that you know, that started in the 70s and, and especially in the 80s uh, in India called subaltern history. It's a kind of a project which had six or 12 or 13 volumes. And subaltern histories is kind of quote unquote uh, history from below. And there's a European tradition as well on that, that, you know, those uh, people who do not leave archives, like, you know, archives are also constructed by those who are literate or those the state constructs the archives, right? Whether it is a uh, uh, notes from a parliament or a reportage on a on a on a law case. It's about the people who can write, right? They live. But what about those who have not written or uh, left uh, uh, written records, right? A poor peasant in in uh, in South India in 1840, right? How do we find his or her voice, or even earlier in in Europe or some? So how do we find those voices? So that's also a methodological issue. So how do we sort of create uh, uh, a narrative out of fragments of uh, information that we receive. So it's also an issue of methodologically what, what archives are. So mm -hmm. sorry to uh, sort of, so was our impetus. Tha, to usme humne, I don't know how successful we have been, but uh, we've brought together different uh, scholars who are from different various disciplines, mostly uh, who have, uh, who, who, who work on Pakistan. So, you know, we have uh, some uh, history on, on labor movement. There's also a, a chapter of, uh, this might be in Trap DSF ki baat kar thi, on covers of uh, left-leaning magazines, underground or otherwise, that were, were part of uh, Pakistan's history. So there is, there are, there's a couple of uh, people who, uh, you know, uh, 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 Mahvesh and Hashim and Ahmed Salim Saab, Jin Ka Intakal Hua. So they got, uh, they basically, we have an essay, which is kind of a photo essay of uh, various covers of uh, of uh, underground or not so, or, or even otherwise, uh, magazines, which are, which had a left, uh, left orientation. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Jaisay, uh, Lailun Nihar Hota Tha, Al Fata Hota Tha, but then there are undergrounds, uh, Jabal, which was Balochistan ki ek tanzeem ki underground uski uh, isi tarah mukhtalif uh, to ek to ye hai phir hamare teen essays hain uh, bengal ke upar uh, east pakistan aur bangladesh ki jo azadi ki jad jahad thi aur uh, aur ek usme se photo essay hai na naila mahmood ka jo uh, jo bengali karachi mein hai ab ek bahut badi abadi hai और कुछ लोग 70s में भी आए 80s में भी आए और वो मतलब इल्लीगली पंजाब के बॉर्डर क्रॉस करके और वो रहते हैं लेकिन कुछ लोग पहले से हैं फ्रॉम द 60s दे आर हियर एंड ऑल ऑफ अ सडन इन 71 दे बिकेम एन नॉन पाकिस्तानीज यू नो दे वर वर्किंग हियर इन द फिशरीज इन द टेक्सटाइल मिल्स और व्हाटएवर राइट बेसिकली पुअर बंगालीज आई मीन एक कहानी और है मनीष साहब जो कि लोगों को नहीं पता और अभी एक साहब छाप रहे हैं उस पर ये तो गरीब बंगालियों की बात कर रहे हैं जो कि अभी भी हमारे यहाँ और उनकी जो सिटीजन स्टेटस एज अ सिटीजन और राइट बियरिंग सिटीजन इज इज वेरी मच कंटेस्टेड बट यू नो वेन सेवेंटी वन हैपन्स वी हैव सिविल सर्वेंट्स एंड आर्मी ऑफिसर्स and other uh, sort of uh, uh, people from of, of bengali descent about 70000 of them mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and they are put in camps they are put in 50 camps for two or three years people in pakistan don't know this history mm -hmm. and this these camps are from the you know campbellpur attack area or even from khyber pass to sort of you know central punjab and in sindh mm -hmm. and people are basically uh, and and now we have memoirs of kids who went to school andari unko unko thoda ration ya paise diye jaate the andari school bhi the and these people only went back after shimla accords in 1973 74 right so and the, i don't did you know about this i only found about it few years I, ago memory I, I, there's some I, i'm not sure if I, I i know about it concretely or just because you're saying it now 
uh, I'm making it up in my head, but I seem to remember there was some talk. I mean, I was, I was a kid then, but about, you know, not until our POWs are returned, you know. Uh, ah, so PMWs be I or you know Bangladesh ko recognize kiya gaya 74 February mein during this and then Mujib comes during the Islamic conference in Lahore. So it's a kind of a history that's sort of obscured. And then we have something on Baluchistan. Actually, the Baluchistan thing is very interesting. It's uh, uh, an anthropologist, Adim Sohel, who teaches at Franklin Marshall. He interviewed two Baluch women from Liari and sort of tells us a Balu story of Baluchistan struggle or the Baluch struggle through a female perspective because we always even if one can say that you know Baluchistan has a story of struggling for its right we always get it from a heroic male perspective right the uh, the Baluch uh, leader who goes into the mountains and fights for its own you know, the country uh, the, the the liberation movement but this is from a, then we also have some history of uh, I don't know if people know but Ifti Naseem uh, Takhar Naseem was a, a, a gay queer poet, lived in Chicago, Pakistani. And he's not very well known in Pakistan, but we wanted to sort of celebrate his work and life. And so we have Omar Kasmani write about that. So in these ways, we have an uh, article on transgender performances. Then we have also uh, Farida Shaheed's uh, 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 sort of a kind of a more uh, historic piece on the WAF or the women's movement during Zia's regime. Mm -hmm. So, in this way, we can't do all the things. We can't do all the things. But we can do all the things. We can do all the things. But the idea of really sort of starting a discussion on how to rethink our history outside the Pakistan studies and nationalist history kind of paradigm of, you know, Jinnah the, or Liaqat Ali Khan the, or Falan the, or Falan the, right? So from the corridors of power, but also about big men whom we call, right? And from the interstices or the subterranean voices that have not been audible. So that's what the motivation is. Right. And and um, we'll have to take a pause here. But before we go into that pause, I just want to say that we have the history of big men and then all the big women that are related to them. And yeah. we, that is... The, uh, the female uh, perspective, whereas no, it isn't. It is all the same. It is of big power. Class. Yeah, it's, it's class. Yes, absolutely. So, uh, do we want to continue? Yes, or, so we do uh, one more seg segment and then I'll let you go. No, no, no. So, uh, Kamran, we have talked about people's histories in Pakistan. And because we have a primary source uh, sitting uh, in discussion uh, right now with me, so you tell us your history. No, I don't have any hidden history or any special thing. Yes, I was born in Karachi and my father was a doctor. He was a doctor who 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 was a तो बहुत ज्यादा हमारी जो स्कूलिंग है कोई बहुत ही बड़े नाम वाले स्कूलों में नहीं हुई लेकिन इत्तफाकन यह है कि इम्तिहान वगैरह पास कर लिया तो मेडिकल कॉलेज में दाखला हो गया मेरे भाई ने इंजीनियरिंग की हमारे एक चचा हैं जो अमेरिका में थे वो इंटर के बाद चले गए फिर वहां से करके वापस आ गए थे 85 में और वो अपनी इंजीनियरिंग करते हैं मेरी बहन जो हैं वो कराची में एक ए लेवल्स का स्कूल है वो चलाती हैं और मैंने डॉक्टरी की लेकिन डॉक्टरी करने ही के जमाने में कुछ थोड़ा बहुत बाएं बाजू की सियासत में तुलबा सियासत में कोई बहुत अहम काम नहीं लेकिन थोड़ा बहुत एक दस्तक एक थिएटर का ग्रुप होता था असलम अजहर और मंसूर सईद चलाते थे उसमें हम शामिल थे कराची के अंदर इट वाज अ काइंड ऑफ अ लेफ्ट विंग और लेफ्ट ओरिएंटेड थिएटर ग्रुप आई डोंट नो इफ यू नो ऑफ द दस्तक जो 
जी और ये अब जो बच्ची इस अरी अजहर और सानिया सईदी हमसे छोटे होते थे आठ आठ दस दस साल तो ये मंसूर की बेटी है सानिया सईद जो अब बहुत अच्छी और काबिल और बहुत ही शानदार एक्टर है और अरीब अजहर जो मौसीकी भी करते हैं परफॉर्मेंस कर परफॉर्मर हैं तो एनी वे लॉन्ग एंड शॉर्ट ऑफ इट वहाँ से मुझे थोड़ा सा ये हुआ कि कुछ ऐसा चीज़ करनी चाहिए जो कि मेडिकल कॉलेज मेडिसिन जो है वो थोड़ी मुख्तलफ हो तो कुछ इस तरह का मौका मिला कि मैं अमरीका जो है वो एंथ्रोपोलॉजी Mm-hmm. I did uh, uh, my master's research in Mexico, and then I spent a year in El Salvador as a UN uh, uh, human rights monitor mm. for a year uh, in the early '90s when the civil when the war was still on, and there was sort of between FMLN and the and the Salvadorian government. A very violent period. A big pardon. A very violent period. Yes, yes, very violent period, and they, they, I was sent to uh, uh, train uh, for six or seven, say, of three or four weeks to, uh, to Mexico in forensics uh, because they knew of my medical degree, and I was basically very much involved in, uh, in uh, if there were extrajudicial killings or ever there were other kinds of violations of, uh, of uh, the. the uh, देखिए ना ये आयरनी ये है ना कि जंग तो होती है वायलेंट लेकिन उसके अंदर भी एक अपने कन्वेंशन uh, होते हैं कि <laughs> किस तरह से मारा जाए किस तरह से नहीं मारा एनी वे सो वो एक पूरा वक्त था और उसके बाद आई डिड माय फील्ड रिसर्च फॉर माय पीएचडी इन ईजिप्ट सो आई लिव देर फॉर टू टू एंड हाफ ईयर्स सो माय अर्लियर वर्क दैट्स वाई द फैमिली प्लानिंग थिंग दैट यू मैंशन राइट एट द टॉप ऑफ द पॉडकास्ट uh and i've been teaching since 1995 i've uh, uh initially taught at the university of rochester for 6 years and uh, then i came here in 2001 and i've been here awesome. and basically at university of texas austin and padhata hu aur you know bachchon ko padhata hu phd's karwai hain pakistani bachche bhi hain turkish bhi hain americans bhi hain indians bhi hain mm-hmm. so i've uh, had a Europeans we have Americans we have definitely and uh, my wife is a uh, uh, is a pediatrician and as an infectious disease specialist who has always worked in a not for profit okay. she still works in a in a clinic that basically the primary uh, patient population is underinsured or uninsured or undocumented and uh, and we have two kids one is both 25 and 26 and both have finished college and they are working so sorry it's too much of biography um, uh, in, uh, in while you were at dow were you at college with asif farooqi asif was uh, you mentioned this and definitely uh, asif was 3 uh, years older uh, not senior to me i don't think he may have been 3 years older than me maybe 2 years he was very bright asif and uh, my uh, from my first day in college i met him somehow through mutual friends and he is just the closest friend i ever had and i still cannot forget it i don't know if you've seen i've i did eventually write something about that and uh, the, the the daughters uh, you know i mean i'm just i i'm sorry it's just it's, it's difficult it's difficult i mean there was and we were very very close well, it's a, a, a terrible tragedy and I mean, if that is one person who should not have gone. There's so much he could. He did so much, and there was so much he did. And for me, it's not only about his uh, his caliber as an intellect, his writing, and all that. It's just like a human level. We were so close. We would, we would just. I mean, our relationship was that we didn't have to. I wouldn't say we would end each other's sentences, but it was always about. in a way it was laughing it was never talking about serious things it was just a way in which you feel comfortable with someone that you don't have to sort of you know mm-hmm. uh express yourself in in a way to be that you'll be misunderstood or something but by and large you know it's a loss for uh for pakistan and for 
for everyone for the world i mean he was such a such a amazing uh, mind mm -hmm. and and uh, so um, i'm still close to the family and the and the um, and his daughters both of them and uh, yeah i all i can just do is can you aap to jaanti hain bilkul aapke sath kaam kiya hoga unhone aur kitabon pe aur mukhtalif cheezon pe bilkul aur main unse aakhri safa march 19 uh, sorry 20 um, 20 mein mili thi ji just i think maybe it was the day the pandemic was declared acha ha जी मैं फरवरी में था वहां पर हमारी एक दोस्त की हमारे म्यूचुअल फ्रेंड की वालदा और मैं उस वक्त लाहौर में था और मैं आया था और हम दोनों साथ गए थे कुल पे और उसके बाद बस वही ये पैंडेमिक हुआ और मैं मैं खाली एयरपोर्ट से उससे मैंने मैं आ गया था वापस जस्ट अराउंड दैट टाइम वो फ्लाइटें बंद हो रही थी तो जी हाथ कुछ कह रही थी मैं ये कहती थी कि उस दिन मैं पाइनियर बुक हाउस में थी ऊपर एक अलमारी बन ठीक हो रही थी और हर जगह ये लकड़ी और पेंट और ये वो फैला हुआ था लेकिन और उसमें आसिफ केम टू सी मी और उन्होंने यही कहा कि भाई अब तुम अपना जाने का करो आज पेंडेमिक डिक्लेयर हो गई है और अगर हो मैंने कहा मैं शाम को निकल रही हूँ चीज हाँ बिल्कुल जाओ एंड देन ही सेट समथिंग but not feeling well but i was a little bit uh, distracted between leaving that evening and this bookshelf that we were building and so it, you know it was a very was a ये तबीयत उनकी खराब रहती थी मुख्तलिफ किस्म की वो थे और लेकिन ये कि ये अंदाजा नहीं था कि हद तक इतनी जल्दी हो जाएगा आप और मैं हम एक पैनल पे साथ थे उन्हीं के जो फेस्टिवल है ना आर्ट क्या था लिटरेचर फेस्टिवल आप कराची के ऊपर था और आपने अपनी पाइनियर बुक कंपनी के साथ जो एक आपका रिश्ता है वो भी जिक्र किया था वो यहाँ गवर्नर हाउस में हुआ था वो अदब फेस्टिवल अदब फेस्टिवल जी मैं और आप साथ थे उस पैनल पे पर मैं आई थिंक आई वाज मॉडरेटिंग दैट सेशन बिल्कुल बिल्कुल मुझे अच्छी ये पूरे थी वो कराची लिटरेचर मुझे अमीना और आसिफ की वजह से सस्ती शोहरत बहुत मिली है क्योंकि वो जब से उन्होंने ये फेस्टिवल शुरू किया तो जब भी मैं अगर मैं होता पाकिस्तान में तो मुझे वो किसी ना किसी दो या तीन या चार पैनल्स को मॉडरेट करने के लिए रख लेते थे तो हम हमें जैसे कहते हैं ना टू सेकेंड और फिफ्टीन मिनट्स और फाइव मिनट्स ऑफ फेम इस वजह से मिल जाती थी कि उनके तवसत से उनकी वजह से दोनों की वजह से आसिफ और अमीना की वजह से बहुत सारों को आपको भी मुझे भी स्पेस बहुत मिली और और खुशी बहुत मिली लॉट ऑफ जॉय फॉर पीपल लाइक आस आई थिंक तो अब आप मुस्तकिल न्यूयॉर्क में है आई गेस ये कहना होगा मुस्तकिल न्यूयॉर्क में हूँ और कराची जाती हूँ और पाकिस्तान जाती हूँ उस जमाने में जब ये सारी लिटरेरी चीजें होती हैं जी तो मैं आ रहा हूँ आई डोंट नो इफ दिस यूल एडिट इट आउट आई एम श्योर बट आई बी देर आई डोंट नो इफ यू नो और न्यू और इकबाल अहमद का नाम तो सुना ही होगा आपने आप मैं उस तरफ भी जिक्र लेके जाना चाह रही थी आप बताइए कि आप कौन नहीं मैं आ रहा हूँ तेईस को उनकी वो है पच्चीसवीं सवाने वो है डेथ एनिवर्सरी है सो देर अ फंक्शन इन न्यूयॉर्क सिटी आई डोंट नो इफ यू नो अबाउट इट अबाउट इट तो वहाँ आपसे मुलाकात होगी अपना मुझे उनसे रिश्ता बताइए अच्छा अच्छा ये बताता हूँ अनिल बट यू नो अबाउट इट सो यूल बी देर हाँ ठीक है हाँ मेरा रिश्ता ये की मेरे अब्बा के कजन थे वो और लेकिन ये कि बचपन से ही उनसे एक बहुत ही बिकॉज ऑफ माय इंटरेस्ट एज अ यंग पर्सन ही वुड कम टू पाकिस्तान सो स्पेशली व्हेन ही वुड कम टू कराची आई वुड बी वेरी क्लोज टू हिम एंड व्हेन आई केम टू यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स एज वेल यू नो वी रिमेन क्लोज एंड या ही वाज लाइक अ जैसे कि वालिद के अपने सगे भाई कोई नहीं थे तो यही लोग थे इन इनकी और इनकी बहन और भाई के बच्चों से भी हम बचपन से साथ पले बड़े हैं इनकी अपनी बच्ची जो खैर हमसे बहुत छोटी है दस पंद्रह साल छोटी है दोहरा 
लेकिन ये सो आई एम क्लोज टू द फैमिली एंड आई वाज वेरी क्लोज टू हिम बट फॉर वेरियस रीजंस बल्कि अभी आई डोंट नो इफ यू नो दे हैड यू मेट हिम आई हैड मेट हिम अ कपल ऑफ टाइम्स इन पाकिस्तान जब वो आगे वापस अच्छा अच्छा हां जब वहां इस्लामाबाद में रह रहे थे और डॉन में लिख रहे थे उनसे मुलाकात कराची में हुई एक दफा और फिर उनसे मुलाकात हुई इस्लामाबाद में और क्या कहते हैं यहाँ जब वो थे और पढ़ा रहे थे तो उस वक्त मेरी उनसे मुलाकात नहीं थी बट देर एट इन द कॉलेज वैली आई वाज एट माउंट जी जी हैम्पशर में थे जी नहीं तो मेरा ये है कि उनके एक भाई थे सगीर उनके दो और भाई थे वो तो बड़े पड़े थे बल्कि मेरे बालिद के तो सगीर जो थे उनका ही डाइड इन इन अ ड्राउनिंग एक्सीडेंट जून और जुलाई ऑफ एंड ही हैड फिनिश्ड हिज एंथ्रोपोलॉजी डिग्री इन द सिक्सटीज फ्रॉम मिशिगन स्टेट एंड सगीर हैड रिटन हैड डिन फील्ड वर्क इन सरगोदा ऑन ऑन पेजेंट्री एंड पोस्ट थॉमसली दैट हिज बुक वॉज ऑल्सो पब्लिश बट रिसेंटली इन द लास्ट ईयर Sagir had a partner uh female uh friend who uh I got to know about and then got her address through Iqbal's widow Julie and I visited her in Vancouver and she had kept everything Sagir's books his articles his passport his uh uh PhD degree and all that kind of stuff and he's very radical and he died young he was in his 30s so I brought everything and I'm going to start archiving that material as well as we have uh, archives sajad sahib's uh, thing which is now available online through ut austin i can send you the link uh, from his uh, daughter who eldest daughter who lived in delhi she gave us to us and the originals are still in delhi but uh, we uh, we basically um, uh, scanned everything and got metadata and searchable and it's online now and uh, so you can do that and this is what we're doing with several other uh, such uh, uh, people ek aur bhi log hain jinka naam left ke hawale se but sajad zahir ki jo archive is up and going you, you can go the fais aap ke sath kaam kar rahe hain unke family ke sath uh, from the university of texas the south asian library here the friend of mine mary trader and i so we are working with fais's family on his unpublished manuscripts and things on a similar kind of project sorry this is a side bar but <laughs> I let you know. Very important sidebar. And, <laughs> and Iqbal and uh, and he had a huge influence on you I would imagine. Very much, very much. I mean he was like a yeah, he was like I mean father figure is I mean it's like an intellectual father figure right from my uh, time at college because he wouldn't he hadn't come back to Pakistan for a while. and he came back in 77 so i was somewhat young i was born in 1961 so in 77 i would have been 15 16 that's when i first met him at his sister's house in rawalpindi mm-hmm. but then he would continue to come to karachi and meet and because uh, he didn't come during the uh, uh, bhutto years ironically or interestingly he and bhutto didn't get along Why? and uh, ha unka kuch tha masla but he was he started coming interestingly in zaya's time and phir main yahan aa gaya 87 mein uske baad se to bahut hi zyada you know taqriban har mahine mein new york chala main baltimore mein tha to wahan chala jata tha kabhi phir 88 87 ke december mein jab wo pehla intifada shuru hua then we brought him in and he would jab wo dc aate the kisi kaam se to main wahan chala jata tha aapko irfan yaad hai irfan hai jo masdat jo likhte the आप जो है मेमोआर वो द लिटिल बुक कंपनी जी जी तो इरफान साहब जो थे वो बिल्कुल बहुत बिल्कुल अख्तर हुसैन रायपुरी के जो बेटे थे तो इरफान साहब तो बेनजीर की जो शुरू वाली हुकूमत में ही बिकेम अ प्रेस सेक्रेटरी एट डीसी तो वहां ये आते थे इकबाल हम लोग तो मुन्नू चचा कहते थे उनको तो वो फिर मैं वहां चला जाता था उनके पास उस जमाने में जो भी होता था तो anyway there are different ways that i kept we were uh, close uh, ikbal ahmed uh, ek university bhi to shuru karne wale the khaldunia ji to unhone jab wo wapas jab aap unki mulaqat hui to wapas ja ke unko kuch zameen mili thi islamabad mein aur unhone wo ji maaf kijiyega 
कौन से जमाने में था मुझे याद ये नाइन्टीज में वो आई थिंक ही स्टार्टेड वर्किंग ऑन इट एंड देन आई थिंक इन नाइन्टी सिक्स और नाइन्टी सेवन ही event in uh, at Hampshire College and Edward Said came and uh, uh, Mubashir Hassan who was very close to the you know to Bhutto ke zamane mein finance minister bhi the you know intellectual he came and so there was a huge event of around his retirement at Hampshire so um, then he uh, went back to Pakistan and uh, was working lekin phir ek do saal mein intiqal ho gaya unka 99 mein तो वो चीज फिर आगे बढ़ी नहीं वो वही कर सकते थे उन्हीं का एक यू you नो know, उनके लिए लोग जो हैं अपनी जेबें भी खोल सकते थे ही वांटेड टू मेक अ हैम्पशर कॉलेज टाइप काइंड ऑफ अ लिबरल आर्ट्स कॉलेज इन पाकिस्तान अब आप डू यू थिंक यूनिवर्सिटीज लाइक हबीब यूनिवर्सिटी कम क्लोज टू दैट आइडिया आई विल बी अ बिट बायस्ड बिकॉज़ आई सर्वड for 3 years at as dean and as interim provost at lums mm-hmm. uh, from 2017 to 2020 i took a leave of absence and i went uh, and served there mm-hmm. uh, also because my mother was not keeping well in karachi so that was a you know uh, for me it was easier to be with her every month for a few days uh yeah uh, places like habib lums has really sort of and now agha khan as well i mean uh, in humanities and social science lums for whatever reasons and there every university has its problem has been able to recruit and retain very good people and there are some of the brightest historians or anthropologists or sociologists or even people in religious studies on literature uh, who are publishing internationally in from excellent uh, Uh, university publishers are getting fellowships abroad so i think uh, habib of course is is there and it's very good and but you know it'll take time to mature they need to sort of just keep good faculty together and move on nahi but it's an excellent it's a gift to karachi and 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 as you're saying about lums you there's already this sort of critical mass being created. exactly exactly wo waqt lagta hai banane mein isliye main keh raha hu iba bhi bahut acha ho gaya hai for whatever you know iba bhi bahut acha hai amongst the state schools so ab dekhiye aga khan ki kholna cha rahe hain liberal arts ko kya karte hain so these are there of course what what habib is doing and what lums has also done is that uh, they have a very important uh, kya kehte hain uh, fellowship program so to bring in people who may not uh, have the uh the kind of resources or advantage of uh, of uh, you know elite edu- and, uh, elite uh, uh, k to 12 education right so unko bhi lana aur phir unko train karna to ye challenges hain so uh, kamran could dare i uh, say that um ke jo jo humne abhi guftugu ki hai उसमें हम उस जमाने की बात करें 1950 ऑनवर्ड्स जब लोगों ने कुछ जिद्दोजहद की और फॉर वेरियस रीजंस वो नहीं कामयाब हुई लेकिन अब एक क्रिटिकल मास क्रिएट हो रहा है जो ज्यादा पाकिस्तान और उसकी जमीन से ग्राउंडेड है और बहुत एजुकेटेड है और उनका जो कैनवस है वो बहुत वसी है वो ग्लोबल है और वो लोकल भी है और वो उनका जो एनालिटिकल पावर्स हैं वो इतनी यू नो उनका कैनवस है कि अब एक्चुअली एक बहुत होपफुल सूरत हाल बनती जा रही है आपके जहन में कुछ नाम है लोगों के जिनको आप समझती हैं कि इस तरह का आपको होप दे नहीं नहीं आई एग्री विद यू आई एम जस्ट ट्राइंग टू सी दैट मैं अगर गुफ्तु करूँ तो किस कहाँ से शुरू करूँ आप बताइए जब भी मैं इंटरेक्ट करती हूँ उन्हीं लोगों से जो इन कॉलेजेस और यूनिवर्सिटीज से पढ़ के निकल रहे हैं से, तो मैं तो बहुत बहुत होपफुल रहती हूँ नहीं आप सही कह रही हैं देखिए मेरे पास आ, मैं तो यहाँ मतलब शुरू में जब मैंने पीएचडी स्टूडेंट्स लेने शुरू किए क्योंकि रॉसेस्टर में तो पी नहीं था यहाँ आया तो यहाँ पर लोग लेने शुरू किए तो शुरू में तो हर जगह से आए लेकिन जब पाकिस्तानी बच्चों को लेना शुरू किया तो मैंने मेरे कोई भी स्टूडेंट जो है अभी आखिर में अब कोई है एक दो खातन हैं 
लेकिन दे डिडेंट कम फ्रॉम एनी ऑफ द एलीट स्कूल ग्रामर स्कूल और एच एस एन और लाहौर ग्रामर और ये सारी इनसे नहीं आए थे एंड दे वर स्टूडेंट्स हु उनके जाहिर सी बात है उनकी वो उस तरह से नहीं थी तो ये भी एक और अब वो माशा पढ़ा भी रहे हैं और लिख भी रहे हैं और कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट कर रहे हैं लेकिन आपकी ये बात बिल्कुल दुरुस्त है और कुछ लोग हैं जो आ, इस तरह से आप पता नहीं अमार जान को जानती हैं या नहीं जी उनको उनसे मिली नाम से आई मीन इस तरह से जानती हूँ कि उनका काम और उनकी पार्टी का हाँ तो अब अमार जो है वो मेरा अंडर ग्रेड मेरे साथ उसने अंडर ग्रेड किया था और उसके बाद तो अमार जैसे लोग हैं और भी लोग हैं सिर्फ वो नहीं है और कोशिश कर रहे हैं कि वो एक ज्यादा जैसे कहना चाहिए रोशन ख्याल और प्रोग्रेसिव कस्म की सियासत करें लेकिन जिस तरह का हमारे यहाँ माहौल है इलेक्शंस के हवाले से और रिसोर्स के हवाले से ये अब मुझे नहीं पता इसकी क्या व्हाट वुड बी द कॉन्ट्रोर्स ऑफ दिस दिस this group of young men and women who are trying to really think about a more egalitarian and a more socially just future for pakistan right and so what would be the way in which their aspirations or their dreams or their struggles would translate so that is something which uh, one will have to there's a lot of thinking and work to be done rather and this is this generation i totally agree with your assessment though that it's an amazing set of young people with really clear head and also grounded and rooted in their own traditions i agree and and yet having a a world view that is not myopic or parochial yes, i agree with you i feel that across the globe we see that that this generation yeah change the world i hope for the better uh, absolutely have absolutely. A, they, they aren't myop, myopic and they have a uh, ethical and moral center absolutely no no i'm bahut aur khaas taur pe yahan pe ab campuses mein jo hum bachchon ko dekh rahe hain the baat ye hai mani sahab aapko bhi andaza hoga is baat ka kyunki you know like and you may have seen it yourself that 80 uh, ye jab uh, anti iraq war ka tha when my wife and i and our young children were younger we would walk it would be predominantly a white group right a lot of the arabs and the muslims were sort of scared because it was after 911 they wouldn't join or african americans or latin americans or you know latino americans wouldn't but now it's uh, it's everyone right you know the kind of ways in with in which the african american the hispanic the lgbtq groups the uh, women uh, movement uh, the jews for jews for palestine you know i mean it's not about religion right it's it's about a certain struggle for anti colonialism against apartheid and so everyone is there actually i'll tell you an, an anecdote because here the dean of our college who is sort of more sympathetic than the president so uh, whatever administrative role i have we were invited and we were talking and and the captain saying oh when the president is talking to uh to them i said who is he talking to and they said oh they're talking to the mosque and i said but this struggle is not a prim- pr- uh, primordial uh conflict between islam and judaism this is mm-hmm. about the struggle for you know ye isko is tarah se reduce kar dete hain bilkul bilkul it's a str- it's a struggle for social justice it's a struggle for against colonialism against oppression against the war or you know a, a, a kind of an apartheid regime so how can you guys not understand that that you're just reducing it to some kind of a essentialist kind of argument right mm-hmm. so i i think the skits sort of through their actions negate that kind of thought seen right through it and then they broken into the consciousness of americans and guess what kamran today hmm. is the anniversary of the nakba that happened ji ji to to 19 ko hai yahan par actually aap dekhiyega maine ek meri student hai and um, i don't know if it's uh, worth uh, plugging here but uh, wo eos aata hai na don ka ji हाँ तो उसमें हम लोग ने कुछ लिखा है इसी पे इट्स रिपोर्ट आज नथिंग थिंक लेकिन वो आएगा इस हसन जैदी ने अभी जस्ट रिटर्न इट्स ऑन संडे के डॉन में आएगा सो ऑन 
is there anything else that uh, you want to tell me about your background? <laughs> no, I was embarrassed. I don't want to talk about myself at all. I asked you, I told you, I have told you a lot of things that I have come and tell you. Because what do I have to do with me? I am now, I am now. Thank you. We are very hopeful about this new generation. Yes, yes. And, uh, and in Pakistan, with these uh, uh, islands of uh, thinking that are really flourishing, or कोई चीज जो आपको पाकिस्तान के लिए hopeful रखती है? नहीं आपकी बात दुरुस्त है. You know, I have हम आप मैं आप में खाले एक ही तरह से सोचते हैं कि मुझे तो कभी मायूसी नहीं होती है पाकिस्तान में. जब भी मैं जाता हूँ, लोग कहते हैं कुछ. You know, बुनियादी तौर पे बात ये है कि लोग यहाँ अपनी अपनी कि जो लोगों के अमेरिका या विलायत में आके वो अपने अपने जैसे कहते हैं दे दिस बिकम पार्ट ऑफ देयर ओन सर्कल्स राइट सो इट्स अबाउट वेयर विल द नेक्स्ट बीएमडब्ल्यू कम फ्रॉम और यू नो विच सबर्ब एंड हाउ यू आर टॉकिंग अबाउट सो दैट सॉर्ट ऑफ बिकम्स देयर देयर गोल एंड व्हेन दे डू द पॉलिट but i've since i've keep, like you keep on going back and meeting people and i've had close relationships with people like asif but others as well you know people who were with me in college have matured into journalists and other kinds of writers and 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 uh, and and in and academics or or people in civil society and uh, who are sort of part of various kinds of struggles so i've always felt very hopeful about uh, the dynamism and the uh, when you know gen the newer generation has taken on the challenges to main to bahut aapke sath hu is baat pe bilkul mujhe to kabhi mayusi dekhiye mayusi to har jagah rehti hai mayusi nahi i mean people have criticism tanqeed to rehti hai lekin tanqeed jo hai sirf baraye tanqeed aur ek nihilistic qisam se ke bhai ab kuch nahi ho sakta aur har cheez kharab hai ye mera kabhi ravaiya nahi raha hai it's a luxury that i don't have, want to have Uh, it's it's a it's a sort of it's useless and meaningless. Yeah. May I, that reminds me that uh, I was um, in uh, Sarajevo in Bosnia, and one day I turned to a colleague of mine and said, "You know, uh, from the outside, if you were just to read about Bosnia, you, you would never come here. And uh, and even if you were to speak to Bosnians outside of Bosnia, you you'd never come here." and he turned to me and he said it's because they left and they have to justify why they won't yeah 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 well so it's so bosnia can never be good things can never be all right here because they have mm. to be able to justify why they left mm. so i thought there was some um some inkling of truth there a grain of truth there and it absolutely uh, absolutely bosnia mein rahi aap manisa sahiba jaanti hai iqbal riza ko jaanti hai Who who used to be in the UN? Uh, no. no. Ah, okay. No, he was once uh, uh, the head of mission at uh, Jabhu Transition or that. No, but that was in the nineties. You may not have. You may have gone more recently. But uh, Bal Reza used to be very senior person, Pakistani origin. He used to be in the Foreign Service and then in in in, in, uh, in the UN. But he's he was based in New York till very recently. So I thought you might know. So, Kamran, on uh, not that I wanted to end this on board. No, no, yeah, bilkul, bilkul, ha. On uh, Raza Sahab, but uh, thank you so much. Uh, no, no, we've spoken a lot, and I hope it makes sense. Just let me know. I don't want to hear my voice again. <laughs> but if you have sent me, then I will give you my children. Wonderful conversation, and. Thank you, Abka. Very nice. When will you go to Pakistan? In December? Mein? इंशाल्लाह उसी जमाने में जी मैं भी जाऊंगा दिसंबर में फॉर अ मंथ शायद उस मुलाकात खैर अब तो रहेगा भी भी इंशाल्लाह मिलेंगे मिलेंगे न्यूयॉर्क न्यूयॉर्क में 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 फिर पाकिस्तान में इंशाल्लाह चलिए आपका बहुत 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 शुक्रिया बड़ी नवाजिश आपकी बहुत शुक्रिया आपका खुदाफिज